Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to Growed Up Geek Gaming, uh, your home for narrative and roleplay focused uh, tabletop role playing game uh, live play uh, here on Twitch. Uh, we begin our third year today on our second stream anniversary with a uh, new campaign, new season, a uh, new system, as well as a new GM. So, happy new year to everybody. Happy birthday to us. Um, thanks to everybody, these people in particular, for sticking around. Uh, with us for these two years, uh, to everybody who's watched, supported us, uh, worked with us, um, thank you for everything you've done. Uh, special shouts out to people uh, like our good friend Wiley Hobbit, um, who absolutely got me into uh, this whole streaming thing and is the reason why we are all here today. So thank you to him, to our good friend uh, Litza for all that she does uh, with our graphics here, and to our boy Andrew, who does an amazing job with all of our character art. Uh, for our fourth or fifth time working together. Um, our shows wouldn't be the same without them, so thank you to all of them who've been a part of everything we've done here. Uh, it means the world to us as we start our third year. Like I said, new system, new campaign, new GM, everything right here tonight. Um, we are back. Uh, I'll start with our character intros. Uh, we'll meet everybody, uh, everybody you know, except for him up there, but we'll get to him in a second. Uh, happy... Uh, New Year to everybody. I'm Manny uh, at Growed Up Geek on your social medias, Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, if you like what we do here, give us a like, follow, subscribe, high five, fist bump, uh, consent given, pat on the butt. We appreciate any form of support. Uh, that is it for me. Uh, we're live here Tuesday nights, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time uh, for our campaign Bloodlords, which we begin tonight. That is going to be it for me. Uh, and yeah, character intro. I will be playing uh, Vita. A human in a land of undead, a pretty girl who just wants to be important and will stab or charm her way to the top. Um, we will go round the horn, finishing with the great intro for our new GM. Let us start with Nick. Nick, happy second birthday, uh, stepbrother kind of thing. Uh, what are you doing, stepbrother? Um, thanks for coming. Um, tell us a little bit about Salvatore. Nick freeze up. Uh, either that or he totally catatonic at this point. <laughs> He's very stoic. <laughs> He's like, I'll speak at my leisure. All right. We will come back to uh, Nick. Let us slide over to Landon, one of our originals. Uh, known purveyor of gnomes. Um, this time, not so much. Uh, go ahead and tell us about Cregan. Yes. So unlike the normal gnome, I am playing an orc named Cregan today, or actually for the next, for the foreseeable future. Uh, you know, he's a humongous barbarian who comes from the Bear Claw tribe, and he is ready to kick some ass, so. Outstanding. Um, all right, let us slide over to our, one of our other originals, uh, Tenta, uh, also playing kind of out of character a little bit for yourselves. Uh, tell us about Dahlia. I'm Tenta. I'm playing Dahlia. She is a witch, a human witch that is now a ghoul. She was a former beauty like Vita, and don't think that that hasn't passed her notice. And she is looking to regain her beauty and her power which she once held, but now she's humble and trying to work from the bottom up again. Um, all right, well, you got to start somewhere. Uh, all right, making his triumphant return after a second dip into fatherhood, uh, one of the founders of the channel, our boy Lewis. Welcome back, homie. Um, tell us about Voris. Uh, hi, I'm Lewis. I'll be playing Voris. Um who basically, essentially, right now is a town guard for a settlement of the undead. So, you know, you never would have seen never would have seen that. But uh, you know, life uh life leads to crazy things, as we all know. And uh it's glad to be uh back on here. I'm glad to be playing uh tabletop RPGs again, and uh, I can't wait to play uh, with my friends again. Awesome. Thanks, buddy. And let's circle back to who we tried to start with to hopefully not anonymous portent. Uh, Nick, yes. 
You good? Hi, I'm back. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. My PC just crashed. That was weird. Uh, I'll be playing Salvatore Styx, a um, corpse stitcher and reanimator, uh, priest of Ergothoa, and he's just a real lovely gentleman. Yeah. Uh, you know, everybody's lovely on the inside, friends along the way, yada, yada, yada. Um, all right, so that is our amazing five-person cast, of which I am so grateful to be a part of uh, playing with guys that we've been playing with since this channel started. And that is all because of one person, uh, Mr. Steven, our guest GM for this campaign, who we're so thankful for and enthusiasm and helping us not only like have a good time like any good GM would, but also being very patient with us as we learn a new system, um, trying to capitalize on the OGL kind of debacle here just in time. Um, so we'll throw it over to our great GM, Steven. Um, thanks for being here um, and take it away. Yeah, thanks for uh, Wizards of the Coast doing all the advertising for the Pathfinder system. <laughs> um. So let's just uh, get into it, I suppose. Uh, the game takes place in a city called Great Urge, or at least that's where it starts. Uh, Bone Shrouded Great Urge is a remote city located in the eastern foothills of the Shattered Range. Ancient and grim, the city has remained free of significant invasions or disasters for thousands of years, despite its distance from the larger uh, fortified cities like Mechatar and Aelid. This is largely due to the city's impressive fortification of bones and stone and its sizable population of ghouls and necromancers, as well as the zombie-tilled fields that surround it for miles in every direction and provided a natural or unnatural barrier to any would-be invaders. Uh, Greater once served as their remote military outpost position to intercept troops invading Geb along the eastern edge of the Shattered Range. Rapidly expanding during the war between Geb and its rival next, the city's architects first decided to use bones to construct the city's buildings and fortifications, simply because the material was so plentiful and provided an unmistakably disconcerting appearance. What began as a convenience quickly evolved into a tradition, then a respected architectural style. This city-sized ossuary is built on and out of bones of Gebites who defy custom and refuse to be reanimated after their demise while some might see Great Urge's uh, macabre construction as a cruel warning to those who defy the dead laws, others see the city as a respectful memorial to agency and death. And let's go ahead and activate that scene. All right, so here we see the uh, map of... Uh, Great Urge on the various districts. Um, we Our story starts at uh, Haldoli's estate uh, down here to the southern end. And uh, let's see. So the south edge of the, is abutting the south edge of the uh, 30 foot walls is uh, Burling Haldoli's sprawling estate. A uh, 10 foot high stone wall encloses the other three sides of her property. As you approach the archway that serves as the main entrance, you see a finely dressed ghoul. He bears his gleaming teeth and a, teeth and a welcoming smile and introduces himself, bowing dramatically. Uh, good evening. I am Mirk. Uh, you can definitely tell that he's wearing a suit that he's not accustomed to. It's, it's a lot fancier than he normally seems to dress, at least the way he carries himself. He kind of just like politely gestures you towards the estate without like further introduction. Krigan will <clears throat> walk forward, not really acknowledging the person so much as just kind of like walking past him, following where he directs us. Uh, Krigan is standing tall, seven foot, 400 pounds, just a massive guy walking past and barely acknowledging him, but just walking right past the gates. So you guys kind of knew ahead of time that you were meeting with a blood lord. Is there anything special you guys would have done in preparation before arriving? Put on fancier clothes? Done anything like that? Oh, I've got my fanciest robes on. Full, like, <clears throat> uh, Geb banner hanging from my scythe. Uh, you know, the, like, little priest stole that they have over the top of them with, with Geb all over it. Yeah, you have uh, think... the the Ankh symbol that like uh, is Geb's basic symbol of the represents him. 
uh, I figured it, uh, I would have like some sort of uh, town guard like dress uniform or even like a just the even just more like a, a a more clean uniform than the one I was wearing before. For for Cregan's clan, they consider a warrior's attire to be proper attire. So I think that he would go in there with his breastplate. He probably wouldn't be wielding weapons. I doubt they'd let weapons in there. But he probably would be wielding, like, wearing his breastplate as a sign of, I am strong, I am a warrior. V Vita would have asked her uh, her mummy friend from previously if she knew anything about our soon-to-be host. Um, either in a like a factual way or in like a gossipy kind of way. Um, and then because she dresses to impress, she'd have gotten, you know, her best little get up paid for the fresh bath and, uh, gotten all dolled up and, and just gone on over. Uh, Dahlia would wear her normal, super revealing, all patched together black dress. Cause that's her favorite. And she's never going to deviate. But she does have like an intricate bone headdress and uh, she's added some sleeves for tonight, like big draping sleeves. And she's looking as good as this girl ghoul gets. She's all makeuped up. She's got nice lipstick on, even though her jaws are mostly teeth. Now, she still tried. <laughs> So we had a session zero encounter uh, where some events took place in Grey Dirge, uh, where you guys uh, sort of were local heroes, and you've gotten a bit of reputation from that. Uh, Vita, one thing that you would have discovered when you tried to speak with your mummy uh, supervisor is that he hadn't been available since that point. Like uh, his offices tell you that he's uh, left town on important business, hmm. so you hadn't had a chance to really speak with him since that that time. Hmm. Sketchy. I don't like it. But around the same time, you receive the invite to invite to Hadoli's estate. Ah, maybe he's there headless. I'll take it. Um, all right, so I haven't been able to talk to my mummy friend, but I did get all dolled up um, for sure. Uh, like I said, dressed to impress. So Mir leads you through the uh, orderly yard. Uh, you see dozens of undead busily, t busily tilling the gardens, pushing wheelbarrows, and hauling heavy loads. Uh, the rigid movements and rotting flesh reveal that these workers are mindless zombies. Uh, Mir turns to you and says, Pay them no heed to the workers. The corpse tenders keep them focused on their tasks. And you do notice amongst the mindless undead, there are corpse tenders uh, working, uh, basically hurting the zombies. The zombies usually have like harnesses of some sort to keep them, their movement focused on what they're doing and not trying to, you know, eat flesh like zombies like to do. Mm. Uh, the... What was that? I was. Just, that's a disconcerting thought. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the villa's primary residence is a large house built in a more modern style, with ribs, skulls, and femurs accentuating the predominantly brick construction. A uh, few outbuildings, storage sheds, workers' homes, and the like are also surround the courtyard. As you approach the residence with Mirk, uh, you hear a loud clatter off to one side. Uh, you look over and you see a zombie has tipped its wheelbarrow over, basically like he abandoned it, just walked away from it, and he started wandering off loose, and he's kind of sort of heading in your direction. <laughs> and as you guys stand there shocked as the zombie's approaching you, you hear a loud tap of a, a staff hitting the porch and you see on the porch uh, the blood lord Berlin Hadali herself uh, she wears a yellow dress with ruffles an orange cloak uh, has the hood thrown back to show her brownish red curly hair uh, she's got a necklace of grisly charms and uh, her staff she holds is a gnarled black staff uh, topped with a pig skull and she taps it on the porch and uh, just that act alone combined with whatever magic she's doing, keeps the zombies like rapt attention, just focus like he just kind of stops in a state of torpor and stares at her. And she's like, Lorenza, where are you? I asked you to keep an eye on this zombie, and yet you seem to have let it loose. 
and before you, uh, a humbly dressed woman comes out, uh, looks like she's very young, and she uh, is immediately apologizing, say, uh, Mistress Haldoli, I I'm so sorry. I, I, I promise I'll do better next time. And then she kind of turns to the rest of you. like, I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. And she does her best to like usher the zombie like back over to what it was doing. Cregan just kind of gives her kind of like a, not necessarily a mean stare, but like a do your job <laughs> kind of look. She uh, gestures for you to enter her estate and says, uh, thank you. I'm glad to have the heroes of Great Urge here uh, to join me for a fine dinner at my estate. And uh, as you're kind of like wandering through the door, uh, you hear Mirik wandering behind her. It's, it's so hard to find good help these days. Um, I'm going to walk in, give her the blood lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, give her like a real big uh curtsy uh formal introduction um i'm absolutely gonna let it slide that uh i'm a celebrant um and then just make my way in in that passive aggressive kind of way that people often are at southern people's homes she kind of claps you on the back as you're starting your introduction uh, she's a halfling, so you, she kind of comes up to about like your waist level. She kind of pats you on like, like the lower that's back. why that's why the deep curtsy. I want to I yeah, get, I she get down reach, there. And she she kind of cuts you off for you introduce too much and says, "Oh, there'll be plenty of time for that during the dinner. Let's all sit down and get comfortable first. All right, I'm gonna slowly raise back up, make my little walk inside. If there's a drink available, I'm gonna snatch it. Uh, the dining room is just beyond a small entryway. Uh, tiny, colorful bone tiles and intricate patterns decorate most of the walls and floor. Much of the furniture is made of a mix of wood and polished bones. Most of the rooms are designed with comfort in mind. Long cushioned benches line many walls and plentiful cushions, rugs, and blankets surround numerous low tables. Other passages lead to adjoining rooms, but uh, Berlin requests the player that uh, you guys remain in the dining room for now. Um, you enter the dining room. There's a long table. Uh, servants are buzzing about uh, setting things up. It uh, looks like there's a huge spread currently at the table that she's just seems to have gone all out, really enjoying the feasting, it looks like. You, know, you see bowls of steamed grains with caramelized onions, raisins, stewed vegetables, uh, tomato and cucumber salad. Uh, it looks like she's set up for uh, uh, opening, whatever you call it, the salad d'entree. You guys are the chefs. You know what it's called. <laughs> hors d'oeuvres? Uh, yeah, hors d'oeuvres. Thank you. I was, man, uh, I was uh, like, yo, put me on the spot. Uh. <laughs> I'll take it in this bush, please. Yeah. Canapé? Now, uh, <laughs> as we sit down, Freegan will kind of like look at Boris and he'll be, he'll say, I'll bet you five silver I can out eat what you can eat today. Oh, well, I uh, love to indulge <laughs> you, but this is. <laughs> nor the occasion for such childish childish a big stomach leads to strong muscles we can't impress the blood lord if you can't even show her that you can get the calories in and build the muscle you need let's just show her you can behave like an adult before you show her that you're you got big muscles there big man oh, fine We'll kind of like just kind of snarl and look away, but he's gonna like grab some food as he does it. Berlin's just watching this whole uh, exchange with delight. She's like, "Oh, please don't hold yourself back in my regards. I enjoy a good show." Freaking little smile. Uh -oh. be, be like, see, she understands the benefits of having a good meal. I'm sure uh -oh. our priestly friend over here can tell you. Uh, she gestures towards Salvatore that the proud little princess enjoys anybody indulging their vices. Here, here. I'll, uh, I'll uh, like, kind of glide over to her, and she's a halfling, so Salvatore is, like, six foot six, so I'll, like, bend as far down as I can and give her a little hand, a kiss. Oh, mademoiselle, you flatter me with my knowledge of Ergothoa, the pallid princess. Uh, yes, we shall feast today. And I'll kind of uh, have Salvatore scan the room to see if there's any, uh, are there any like, living servants in here at all? Uh, make a perception check. First roll. 
Uh, blind roll? Yeah. Perception checks are blind rolls. Sir? <laughs> Okay. Uh, you do see that there's a mix of uh, living and undead servants. Uh, you notice that uh, there's a couple skeletal servants. One of them seems to be like this really lanky skeleton that's almost tall. It's He's definitely taller than you. He's about like seven foot tall or more. And uh, it looks like she's he's the one that like she has reached all the things on the tall shelves that she can't reach <laughs> and that sort of thing. Nice. Efficient, but there's, like there's plenty of human servants around and you do kind of notice, you get the feeling that uh, though she's smart, uh, Berlin seems to be all smiles and politeness and everything like that. The servants have a little bit of, or a lot of fear actually, that they're really trying to like stamp down and not like show it, but they're definitely like afraid of whatever she might do to them. I'll just, uh, so I'll just kind of rub his hands together and lick his lips a little bit. Dahlia is going to look around the fair and kind of have a disappointed look on her face. I don't see any human at all. She says, oh, don't worry about that. I wanted to prepare it fresh just for you. Um, and she kind of snaps her fingers and out of the kitchen comes a tray with like just a pile of like flesh. Uh, this is from an orphan gentleman that uh, happened to be in town. Uh, he owed some money and uh, this is how he's repaying it. I hope you enjoy. I heard the orphan are a hearty, a strong people. Oh, so, uh, Thank you for accommodating me. Dahlia will like give a very Dahlia is six three and you know, tall for a lady and fairly muscular for a ghoul still. And she'll bend all the way down and shake her hand and kind of make her way over to the plate with now singular focus. <laughs> She's wanting to eat that now. And uh, for our Vettelorana Vettel friend, uh, we have this special concoction that uh, I've been working on. I'm, I'm hoping it's to your satisfaction. Uh, I know you kind of suck the souls out of people, but uh, we got this vessel here that's supposed to contain that energy. And uh, hopefully if you drink it, you get your same sort of sustenance from it. Ooh. A juice box. <laughs> Oh, so she ushers everybody to, like sit around the table and she sits herself and starts like scooping like plentiful amounts of food on her plate um she says all right well now that we're all together before we get into any serious business uh why don't you go all tell me a little about yourselves and uh, i guess i'll dahlia looks around and she's like i i guess i'll go first i'm uh dahlia laveau I am uh, I am a newly made speaker of Abaddon and Oracle, and I'm in town trying to uh, use my gifts to greater my station. He says, oh, that's very interesting. The speakers of Abaddon, they're a small faction, but they certainly seem to have a lot of folks ears. What sort of fortune telling have you done that might benefit me? I, I can tell you anything. Who you will love, when you will die, who you want dead, if they're alive or not. Oh, all of that sounds very interesting. Uh, why don't you give me a little sample? All right. She'll kind of look around and crack her neck reach into her dress and pull out a little like bag of blank black dice and start rolling them around in her finger. What do you want to know? Oh, just uh, how do you feel this evening's activities will fare for everyone? Hmm. She kind of looks around at everyone and sniffs everybody. I imagine fairly well. And she'll roll the dice. They're all different shapes, but none of them have any like symbols or numbers or anything on them. But she can read them. Uh, it looks like it looks like it'll go well for everyone. Maybe one of us might not make a great impression. 
but at least that one of us is handsome. And she'll look up at Cregan and smile a really jaggedy, toothy grin. Cregan will avert his gaze as you look at him. He, he kind of like looks looks at himself. <laughs> kind of like, me? <clears throat> she claps in delight at that at the show that you put on, and she says, oh, that's very exciting to know. And I'm sure he has his charms. Uh, why don't you tell us a little about yourself, uh, Mr. Largefella? He, uh, he kind of looks, and he doesn't have the same sort of um, he mumbles a bit more as he talks to her as opposed to when he was talking to Voris, uh, having known Voris for quite a while. But he says, <clears throat> I, uh, I'm Cregan, born to the Bearclaw clan. We immigrated here many years ago before I was born. Very strong. I could be a good warrior. I always seek strength. Okay, and you didn't bring your giant weapon with you? No, no, I, I didn't bring it. Because I, I okay. imagine they wouldn't allow, like, you get to come into a, this place armed, right? Uh, and, see, the uh, did anybody else bring their weapons with them? I would um, have, unless they asked. I would have taken it all the way until somebody asked me not to. Yeah, it, it seems like I everybody else my... brought their weapons and okay. nobody said anything about it. Okay. Well, yeah. Cregan would have brought his then as well. I just imagine they wouldn't allow it. But um, he will. Well, it's okay. He can imagine that. Just in case. Cregan will say, um, after that, he'll say, I, um, with my weapon, and he kind of like points to it at the back, his back. It's like humongous sword that looks like it was forged literally for a giant um not the type of weapon that you could see any normal person swinging around at least not throughout an entire combat and he says with this at my back i feel like there's no challenge i can not overcome he says well that's a very impressive weapon you have there uh, is there any Fun story of how you obtained it. Did you slay the giant beast that wielded it? Um, actually, I came across an old giant during my travels. I haul things for the construction. The uh, the builders league. Sorry, I was trying to say my back background there. The uh, the builders league, and I came by a giant on one of my travels. He was an old giant and he was too weak to carry on as he was. I helped him. I could see the strength in him, what once was anyways. And he rewarded me with this weapon saying he used it when he was younger, but he was much too old to continue its use. Then he went on his way and I went on my well, that's very exciting. Uh, love to hear the story and history of a weapon such as that. I hope you, uh, you've you got Letty, uh, lots of good stories to it as well. Yep. It was there for me during my... for every delivery afterwards. And it served me well. Bandits, they... Um, if they don't run away at the sheer sight of it, they do after the first one is well let's just say the meat market didn't need to uh have their butchers work on them she laughs at that she says oh i bet it's very intimidating in a battle that's why i'm glad you're here with me tonight but uh before we get to that let's uh meet the rest of our uh guests here she kind of gestures at the other three as who would like to go next. Uh, Salvatore will stand up and do another super deep bow. Ah, madame, I am Salvatore Styx. I am here at your service. At like the whole time while he's just bowing super deep. <laughs> she says, oh, now, no need to be so formal. Although, uh, give me a perception check real quick, uh, Salvatore. Oh. 
let's do that secret. Yeah, bye bye. bye, -bye. All right. Um, yeah, she asked you. Uh, she says, "Oh, no need to be so formal," and she kind of just uh, weighs you off. Says, uh, "Just you know, have a seat, relax, enjoy your time. We're uh, we're all friends here, just having a conversation." I'm sorry, I don't have many friends. And I'll, he'll just sit back down. She says, "Oh, I'm sure that's not true. I heard you've done great work with the reanimators." And uh, we appreciate those that work hard for us. I do try, madam, uh, but I do not count the undead as the mindless undead as my friends. Oh, no, they're just tools that we use to get our work done more efficiently. But uh, there's plenty of those that are out there uh, resurrecting them, checking the bodies and repairing them and all that fun stuff. <clears throat> I will stitch as many corpses as I can in a day. That accent is quite interesting. Uh, where are you from exactly? Oh, just north of here. In Pankeg. Oh, wow. How long has it been since you've been there? I've, I've heard stories. Many years. I have not been home in a long, long time. Well, I... Hope there's no one there that you're particularly attached to. Hmm. Anyway, she kind of like brushes off the any explanation of what that could mean. Uh, how about you, young lady? And she gestures towards Vita. Um, the whole time everybody else has been talking, Vita's like been constantly like trying to get drinks and like really trying to eat as much as um, she can. So she's gonna be caught off guard, like probably food in her mouth, like mid drink. Oh. Um, you know, just a girl from far away wanted to come here and make a name for herself that I could find impossible elsewhere. And as a girl, I've always admired Geb and its peoples, and I wanted to be a part of it. And now here we are in the magnificent home of a blood lord of all things. It's incredible. And then. I know, I'm amazed by it every single day. I wake up and, oh, I'm in the house of the Blood Lord. It's my house. <laughs> it's very, it's, it's beautiful. And just, yeah. Looking at everything and. So are you not originally from Geb either? Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no, no. Just not from really anywhere. Left alone as a kid. Knew that I was never going to be anything and. Always heard stories of this place and wanted to come here, and now here I am. Well, let me tell you, I can personally attest that uh, hard work and dedication are pay off in this uh, society here. Hopefully that is true. Praise Geb. And uh, last but not least, uh, how about our guard fellow right here? I kind of look down at her just because I'm just a little bit taller and kind of soften my gaze a little bit. Uh, you can call me Forrest, ma'am. And uh, just a humble servant of your city doing his job. Uh, just trying to, to please the, the city. That's all, I, that's all I'm aiming for right now. He says, oh, well, you don't need to be so formal here. We're all friends, as we've already established. Have our, how's the work been with the guard? Uh, I oh, noticed you're with the Carters. Uh, form, formally, formally, ma'am. I uh, separated myself from such organizations as, as you know, just to try and limit exposure to uh, a kind of certain folk, if you know what I mean. She says, oh, yes, we want to avoid those unsavory types from uh, getting it established in our society. Uh, I, uh, that's what I heard you guys dealt with at the uh, Court of Ghouls the other day was uh, some uh, some yes. unsavory types from the church of uh, she who shall not be named. Yes, ma'am. We uh, dealt with them uh, quite, quite effectively and uh, made sure they won't harm any of our wonderful citizens in this town again. Oh, I'm sure you did, but I would love to hear it as a story and not just a report filled out on a 
piece of paper. I've had so many of those in my life, and I get so rare to get uh, the, the actual story from the actual people. Well, if, I guess since we are here, I'm, I might as well oblige a lady of such renown as yourself. Well, I was uh, doing my rounds in the in the market, as I normally do, you know. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, a commotion started. And uh, little did I know, it uh, turned into uh, quite a ruckus. And uh, we uh, qu formed quite a posse, as it seemed, uh, the five of us. I, I don't really know many of these people as other than the big man, as, as you might know. Uh, we, uh, we've run into each other in the past. We've my as you can say uh tangled before but uh he's he's not a bad fellow the rest of these the rest of these folk i can attest to their to their will as can say to what a dude is what what is what is what we consider to be all right well certainly it is a blessing that fate has brought us all together here that you all happen to be there at that situation or able to handle it I heard they were after your uh, mentor, uh, Noham Moshif. Is that correct there, uh, Vita? Um, so it would seem, um, you know, celebrants and those who are out expressing the greatness of Gib, we find ourselves as targets quite often of the enemies of the state and just non-believers in general. Luckily, we were all there to pitch in and save somebody as great as them. And uh, the reports that I got sort of left off what happened after they had left the market. And uh, I heard that you were ended up outside the city. But what happened between uh, the market and there? I'm going to look at Boris as feeling like it's not really my place. She's like, oh, no, it's all your place. Uh, I'm asking everybody here. I want the story from each of you. I want to get an impression of like how you felt during the situation. Regan will speak up and say um, they fled like cowards. We chased them through the sewers all the way to their hideout where they were casting positive spells trying to kill us. But, and he's going to like grab the handle of his weapon. We slayed them. They stood no chance. Boris snuck around the, the back investigating and flanked them, and we took them from the front. They stood no chance. She's a very expressive audience, and when you mention, uh, like, dealing positive damage, she, like, gasps appropriately, like, oh, no. No, I am correct that they would call it positive energy, right? That's not yeah. just like a... Okay, the positive, it. it's from the positive energy plane, and there's the negative energy plane, and these are actual things that can exist and you can go to if you have the power to. Awesome. I just want to make sure I wasn't, like, using, like, game mechanic terms for no nope. terms. Awesome. We gave the body of the... Phrasma? Phrasma pre priest? Yeah. Yeah, we gave the body of the Phrasma priest to the, well, the the Velatarana over there. Yes, we took it back to the reanimators. She says, "Yes, unfortunately, uh, the blessing of the." Lady of Graves kind of prevents any sort of necromantic magic uh, being done to the body, but her associate, the alchemist, uh, sure was chatty after we had a chance to uh, bring her back. Uh, we learned all sorts of things. Apparently, uh, the one I took big... to my boss, you mean, came around? Oh, uh, all things filter through me in the city. Oh, well, that's good to hear they, they came around. I, I didn't think they were going to make it. Oh, they didn't make it. Oh, she kind of has like a wicked smile on her face. That's good to hear. But we learned that uh, your friend uh, Nohem is something that uh, 
or someone that they have a huge grudge against. Apparently he has uh, been a bit of a torture, as their words were, when the original purging of the of the uh, Carters happened. He was uh, very enthusiastic in those days, and that's kind of how he established himself around here. And it seems like they didn't take, a kind, take kindly to that. Was there like a nickname that Noham would have had that like the streets would have used in that in in those days? Um, you can give me a society check for that if if you have like a specific lore that's related to a region, then maybe that could be applied. Um, I have a, a Mechatar region, but I don't know, not around here, per se. Oh uh, yeah, Mechatar would work. You can roll that. All right. Make sure you do that as a blind GM roll. Okay. Uh, yeah, you get a. You do recall that there was a, a lot of like sort of like public executions and torture for the people that like were established as Farazmans uh, back in that time. It happened about like 20 years ago or so. And uh, Nohem's name kind of came out of nowhere during that time as like someone who was like a very uh, effective like interrogator and that sort of thing. Very so, enhanced interrogation. So like like Noham the interrogator, or like Noham the butcher or something like that. They like they would have like called him just kinda like in like hush hush circles or something like that. Yeah, that would be like conversations that the people on the other side would have. Uh generally like on the uh the Geb side, everybody was like uh well impressed with his work hard work and dedication. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean being a, a like a, a city guard for a, a little while. Um I I would, I would have at least kind of like heard the like grumblings between like bad guys and good guys and stuff like that at least. Yeah. Okay. He didn't have like an official like nickname, but there's all sorts of names that were called of him. Yes. So it basically like I would have I would know who he was basically her speaking of him like that yeah you get a sense of like oh yeah that's that's that guy that we that's that's um okay all right like you'd never met him before until that day when you happen to meet him in the market but i but i knew who he was before meeting him yeah you just didn't put okay. the connection until just now okay So as the conversation continues, uh, the servants bring out more food. Uh, the main course is a sweet and savory chicken, eggs, and an almond pie. Uh, let's see. There's a hearty stew of lamb, carrots, and potatoes, a basket filled with loaves of crusty bread. Cregan, as a barbarian, uh, doesn't have the best manners, and he's just digging in. As the food comes out, he's like, still has his mouth stuffed with one of the plates and he's grabbing from the other plate he's uh having the time of his life right now i uh, the more like enthusiastically you're eating the food the like more delighted she is with the whole thing like she's basically kind of a feeder and just providing you as much it's an insane amount of food it's like way more than is necessary for the small group of people like the plate the table is covered in dishes all different sauces and side dishes and all sorts of things Um, she says, well, it was uh, nice to get to know all of you. Why don't you tell me a little bit what your uh, ambitions are here in Gibb, since uh, you have a little bit of a reputation now, and that's something that can be worked on and uh, nurtured if you play your cards right. Where would you see yourself uh, in the future? Well, uh, ma'am, I'm uh, trying to earn as much as I can in this life to prove just how uh, how how good I can do for society. Ah, so you're already planning for your next life? Oh, yes, ma'am. I plan for the future far, far long ago. Ah, well, have you made your decision on what sort of undead life you'd like to lead? 
Not quite yet. I was kind of letting the cards lay down as they might, but, uh, you know, I wasn't a, ever opposed to it, as they say. Oh, yeah, that's where I'm at as well. Uh, lots of folks like to offer up their undead services, and especially to blood lords such as myself, being a quick is something that sort of stands out and people take notice. Uh, vampires, you know, they're constantly wanting to, like, get you under their thumb and show you how beautiful and elaborate the life of a vampire could be. Uh, nothing personal, uh, she gestures at Salvatore. Uh, I have an aunt who's a, a vampire. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm well aware of the like. She's, she's a lovely lady. I, I, I do, you know, it, 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 it happens. Some of them can be nice folk. It's okay. Um, you know, I, uh, as you say, they, they are just weighing my options like you. It's, uh, it's uh, just trying to live the life I fit, see fit. <laughs> yeah, I hope that uh, day is long down the road for both of us. Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And I go back to eating and drinking. She says, what about the rest of you? What are what are your ambitions here in Grey Dirge or Geb as a whole? Freegan will say, I just want to be stronger. I don't want anyone to overcome me and once someone does if i fall in battle may may mercy be upon the gods because if it has a face if it has a name it can be killed and i will be a warrior in life and in death or undead she says oh yeah we definitely won't let a specimen like you go to waste even if uh, you do happen to fall we will bring you back, and you will guard this uh, country for millennia to come. Very nice. Um, I'm just gonna kind of look around. Um, I don't know. I wanna, I wanna be something, something I could never be, back home. Um, and honestly, I'm here for a good time, not a long time. Well, it sounds like you're already being something more than what you were back home. Oh, absolutely. I would have never dreamed of being in a house like this back home. She says, well, I'm glad you're so impressed with my humble estate. I am a newer bloodlord as it is, and uh, I decided to stay out here in uh, Grey Dirge where I could live as a king as opposed to being the lowest tier bloodlord over in Mechatar. Sometimes you got to find your place, you know, where you can stand out trying every day and it just you know that that impressed like facial expression as she looks around the room some more taking big drinks eating would you say you're being genuine or is this like a deceptive behavior i don't know man my wife's good at it i think she's terrible at it but she <laughs> thinks she's good at it i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I love you, baby. Boris kind of <laughs> Boris kind of like chuckles to himself when he's when she says uh, that this is the nicest house that uh, she's ever been in, and and he kind of like that part's looks true. around and like he kind of looks around and like he, he nods and just like yeah, that is pretty nice. It is pretty nice. <laughs> yeah. So like. You know, I mean, I don't know. I don't know how to, like, compliment people on their house, like, more than once. Be like, yo, man, nice house. Cool, thanks. Like, to keep going on about it, I don't know how to do that and still seem genuine. I can't see it as a genuine expression. How many times I got to tell you your dining room's nice? <laughs> man, this room's really nice, bro. You've been here for 20 minutes. I get it. Um, no, I like it, man. I yeah, like it. Just, just wow, man. Tables and chairs and everything. It's incredible. Um, no, I, I, I'm kissing up. Like it's not condescending. It's, you know, trying to, trying to seem eager and impress. Like, Im yeah, acknowledging of her station in in life. Okay, I was just curious if there was like a deception check, maybe. No, but... like I said, I'm not trying to be like shitty about it. I just, I'm, I'm kissing ass probably more than anything. Okay. Yeah. And I'm gonna go back to eating and and like drinking, like really, really uga throwing it up. And of course, I wouldn't want to disparage those that left in unlife. Uh, what about you? You uh, definitely have a long futures ahead of you. Where do you see yourself? 
And she gestures to uh, Dahlia. Dahlia, um, well, I once was a powerful witch matron, and that was taken from me when I was turned to a ghoul. So was my beauty. My power was all stripped from me, and I'll never forget it. You're still beautiful. But she looks over and her eyes are all like green and yellow and her teeth are like way longer than her tiny lips. She's like, thank you, dear. We you were you. very nice. But I'm here in town to get my beauty back and win the hand of Geb. Maybe. Oh. Maybe. If I so choose, once I have my beauty back, I could get any man. Including Geb. That is a lofty goal you're setting for yourself. He is a uh, very one-sided man. I think he already decided who his life partner is, and that person is uh, from the country to the north. <laughs> well, nothing's sealed yet. Shoot your but shot. But I do girl. appreciate the ambition. It is uh, good to see someone with goals in mind. Uh, even revenge is a goal. Revenge is always a good motivation to keep uh, you strong and keep you dedicated to what you're what your overall want in life. And, uh, Salvatore, a uh, priest dedicated to Ergothoa. Sure, there's something more than you want to just serve the Pallid Princess. Uh, Salvatore will uh, look over and give her, like, a real smooth wink. Someday, maybe I will sit by your side on the Council of Blood Lords. And then a oh, huh. nice little hand gesture. She says, well, if that does happen, I sure hope you remember who your friends were that uh, helped you get your start. I, I am uh, always looking forward to making new friends. I find the Blood Lords are often too focused on uh, who, how they can get one over on each other when I think we all should be working together to make this a better nation. I'm always out there trying to make connections with other blood lords. Juntos, together we shall rule. We're Geb. Praise Geb. Woo. Praise Geb. Yeah, I'm not even like trying to cheer as anybody who's going to raise it and start drinking. Kriegan still has like a mouthful of food as he just like raises his and like downs the food with the uh, with the drink. Uh, so dinner is starting to wind down. You guys have pretty much eaten your fill at this point. Um, and she uh, says, she kind of relaxes in her chair as the servants are clearing off the dishes. And she says, uh, well, I'd like to thank you all for joining me today. I trust you enjoyed the meal. Uh, if not, we can always turn you into a zombie. They're far less picky, right? And she kind of laughs at her own joke. I'm going to laugh a little too loud. <laughs> 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 They're very low maintenance. <clears throat> well, that's not entirely correct, which is, I suppose, is the reason why I've gathered you all here. Uh, you know me, I'm a necromancer by trade, and uh, as a blood lord, I'm basically a necromancer with a lot of paperwork, responsibilities, and competition. And as I'm also closely affiliated with the reanimators, you know, one of the great factions, I'm responsible for raising and maintaining the undead labor, for labor force that operates Great Urges Farms. We grow lots of food in Geb, not just for the Gebites, but for trade across the inner sea. I'm talking about actual people food. I mean, food for living people, not food that is leaving people. That's not my specific business. The zombie farmers, those are my business. Uh, they don't run the farms, they just work the farms, like uh, you've seen on my estate. Uh, they're all under the direction of my charge hands. Uh, it's a difficult and dangerous line of work, but it's possible to turn most zombies into relatively docile creatures with the right techniques. Uh, the charge hands keep the working zombies from shambling this way and that. Most of the charge hands are zombies themselves, in fact, but ones that have uh, retained their personalities and memories. They do good work. However, in the last few days, I learned of some trouble at one of the farms that supplies food for the people of Grey Dirt itself. It's uh, called Old Eros Farm. Uh, it's built on the foundations of an old stole dwelling of some kind, possibly as old as Grey Dirt itself. While well, the farm missed a few shipments, and I sent some workers to investigate, 
uh, but they couldn't get too close. There were zombies roaming everywhere. I can't imagine any of the charge hands abandoned their duties, uh, much less all of them, so I suspect there's been foul play. That's where you come in. I want you to go to old Eros Farm, put the place back in work in order. Uh, from the sound of it, the zombies caused quite a fair bit of damage. Broken enclosures, doors wrenched from hinges, crops trampled, charge hands slain. I just want you to fix what you can, recover any food that's worth eating, and make sure the zombies can't do any more damage. Um, most importantly, I'd like to find out what happened and have you report back. Uh, you should seek out Braddock. He's in charge. Uh, he's the only living me member of the workforce. He's a distant cousin of mine. Uh, you'll know him by his bare feet and red hair. If he's not there, look around and see what you can find out. And as a payment, I'll sign over the deed to an abandoned manor just outside the city. It came into my position recently, and I think I'd, and think of no better use for it to reward my new friends in their service. Hmm. But are you, you giving us a, a manor in the ovens? Uh, no, it's in the grace. Ooh. My grace. Hmm. <laughs> quite nice. Quite nice. Very nice. Very nice. I, I figure the heroes of Great Urge need a place to uh, have something to show their status as coming up in society. I shall be so sad to leave my cupboard behind. Oh, I'm sure those old witches won't mind. I'll have a conversation with them for you. <clears throat> and your cousin's name was Bredick? Yes, uh, I'll write it in chat for you guys to know how to spell Braddock. And the farm was old. Old Eros? Eros? It has a sort of glottal sound. Old Eroch. Ah. Eroch farm. Right, got it. Do you guys have any uh, questions on regards to what needs to be done or how it needs to be done? Uh, We're going to a farm to do minor repairs and uh, fix doors that zombies knock down. When we're there, if we <laughs> find any who aren't properly labeled, any living, uh, what what would we do with them? If they weren't, if their badges weren't properly displayed, shall I say? Oh well, if there's any any interlopers that have caused problems, I'm sure you know how best to deal with them. Uh, you do have a man of the law with you, after all. Um, be careful handling the zombies, though. Uh, if they're out in the field and not uh, directly aggravated by anything, they're docile enough to be. Uh, herded around, but I don't want you to take any chances. Any zombies that get agitated, uh, it's better just to put them down. Uh, we can always make more later. Uh, the main thing I want is just to get the farm safe enough for uh, me to send my workers over there. Uh, they're not warriors themselves, so if they're attacked by zombies, then uh, they're not going to be able to defend themselves like you would. And if there's attackers like you mentioned, then uh, they should be found as well. Um, Very well. Can I get a uh, reading from her to see if she knows like more than what she's leading on the why why she's sending us there. Uh, sure, that would be a perception check. Uh, go ahead and make that as a blind GM check. Okay. Uh, you get a sense, like, over the course of the night, she's basically, like, trying to curry favor with you guys as you are sort of local celebrities at this point. And she, you know, everything's about status and Geb, so she figures if she's friendly with those people and helps them out, then that, that spreads and she gets to sort of, like, attach to what you guys are currently doing. But uh, yeah. her status is probably going to help you a lot more than it's going to help her at this point. Yeah. Uh, so through, so throughout the uh, night, could I try to make an impression on her? Uh, you With, certainly uh, can. You said the ask, magic words. Uh, ask history and um, schmoozing and all my wiliest of wiles. 
Uh, you can, <laughs> yeah, you can do diplomacy or any of the social skills, or if you have like a specific lore that's uh, relevant, like she's the necromancer, so maybe you could talk shop with her, that sort of thing. I have a uh, zombies lore. Yeah, she's a uh, well versed in zombies, so that's a good way to help, uh, you know, get in grid with her. So go ahead and make that as a blind check as well. And then, so I'm gonna just kind of. So uh, you offer us the deed when we're done, but you also might send us out into our our untimely uh, demise, which might also add to your current supply. What uh, uh, what do you think you can do for us in the meantime? She says, "Well, that's uh, the risk you take every day at your job, I imagine." Yes, ma'am. That's the risk I take at my job. I also get paid for my job. Well, this is your new job here, working with me. Yes, ma'am. I, I understand that. I understand that. I'm just, uh, as you as you might say, uh, just trying to make sure I'm well taken care of, as you as you as you say. She says, "Oh, don't worry. I always take care of my friends. If you do a good job, then uh, I'll make sure you get additional rewards as I." see fit oh well just just see that i'd like to stay living as as long as i see fit all right so salvatore uh you're you've been ch chatting with her over the night about uh zombie raising and managing them and that sort of thing um and uh she seems quite impressed with that and she says well you really know your stuff i'm sure glad that i took this time to get to know you I don't always get a chance to meet all my reanimators working under me. There's so many, after all. But uh, I believe I have something that can help you on your task at hand. And uh, she she gestures to one of her servants, and they bring out, like, a, a on a platter, there's, like, a couple potions, and she hands you an oil of unlife. And then for the living folk, she hands you a, uh, uh, what is the, the elixir of life, a lesser one. Is it minor? Oh, yeah. The minor, I think, is the lowest one. Elixir of life. Yeah, minor is the... So you get a minor elixir yeah, minor, life. Minor elixir life. Word. Awesome. And the minor oil of life. All right. Were you able to add those to your inventory? Yes, sir. And I just doubled my wealth by doing that. Woohoo! <laughs> Uh, Are there I any other questions? I mean, I'm good. Sorry, what was that, Salvatore? Oh, I just said uh, th thanking her, and then he'll just kind of simper and bow and like glide back away from her. Uh, she says, uh, "Well, I suppose there's one thing you could look into if you don't mind. Uh, I think uh, Iraq must have been a hermit of some sort uh, quite some time ago, but nobody really knows who he was. Uh, if you're." Uh, his name is just a name written on the wall of the farm, as far as I'm aware. If you can uh, find anything that finds out who he is, I'd, I'd sure like to know that. I could uh, possibly give you even a hand, and she kind of gestures at the table, and there's like a little crawling hand servant that's been crawling around and help serving and everything. <laughs> nice. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> and its name is Hand? Well, Does... it's a hand. You can name it whatever oh, oh. you want. Gotcha. And I put in the notes, possible reward of a hand. <laughs> I'll, I'll give, I'll put my hand out to shake the hand's hand, his, his body, I guess. I'll shake his whole body with my hand. It seems unsure of what's happening to it, and you kind of just set it down and it kind of just <laughs> pauses for a second and then skitters back to whatever it's doing. <laughs> that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so any of you that benefit from sated, I think that might just be Dahlia. Uh, you get that from eating all this food. And... Um, she kind of gets up uh, with Mirk, and they kind of usher you towards the exit. Um, uh, by the door, she kind of pauses and says, well, by the way, uh, just one final warning. Uh, watch out for Mashguda. He's a uh, cow that was gifted to me, and uh, 
he was very big and strong, so I turned him into a zombie cow, uh, so he'd be a loyal servant. But uh, he's a stubborn sort, and if he got loose, if he lost his harnesses and the charge hands are gone, he's just going to wreck havoc over that place. So it's better uh, you put him down, but just be careful. He's, he's quite dangerous. Hmm. Oh, All right. Mash, mash Gouda. Mosh, mosh Gouda. <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll type it. That Gouda with a H G H U D A. Yep. Awesome. So they give you directions to the farm. It's about 16 miles southwest of Great Urge. Uh, it's amidst some of the low foothills of the Shattered Range. Um, it's kind of just out in the middle of nowhere. That's, uh, is there any particular guy, way you guys want to approach this? Do you care what time of day it's, it's, it's evening, but it's still light enough that you could go there during light. Or if you want to go during night, you can go during night. Oh, I go during the day. Police. I always right prefer at... night, but. This police man comes at the day. <laughs> We should probably go during the daytime because the living can't see well at night time. Okay, you can say it. We're human. <laughs> Blind as a bat in the dark, dog. I you think I am. say it plain. I think I am too until uh, next level. Wow, that sucks. <laughs> All right, we'll just form a chain. Dahlia, you're in the front. Or can can Cregan see in the dark? Link yeah, up. Uh, yeah, Cregan has dark vision. All right, link it up. Cregan's in front. Me next after Cregan. All right, so um, the map like just comes with the the extent of the estate and there's farmland beyond where like uh, you see as you're approaching you see several zombies just kind of wandering out in the fields um salvatore you'd kind of have the idea you you'd know basically that like normally these zombies should be corralled like uh when they're not working um but if the farm has taken a bunch of damage it's not much point in trying to corral them if you don't have any place to put them yet We put them down, and I'll stamp my scythe on the ground. So around the estate is a 20-foot high wall. Um, the main road uh, leading south uh, leads to a big double gate. Um, I believe you guys should be able to see. This is a separate day, correct? Uh, this is that evening, unless this you guys wanted to. Is that the same evening? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Why is Dahlia hurt? We'll go ahead and make sure you're healed up. Uh, we probably just didn't take the like long rest after the session zero. I noticed mine was injured too, but I just set it to. All right, yeah. Her. Make sure you rest up and your spells are set and all that sort of stuff. Okay. Ta Good, healthy, feeling it. Feeling vital. <clears throat> Let's see. The road winds between a few low foothills before leading to a sprawling a sprawl of tilled fields nestled in a wide flat valley. A large rocky outcropping dominates the center of the valley. An ancient high wall high stone wall encloses a compound on the valley floor at the northwest corner of the outcropping. That's basically the structure you're approaching um, to the to the southwest side. There's a big uh, stone structure. I mean, it, it looks like a giant like uh, hillside that there's like a cave and stuff carved into. If you can see that far into the farm, but you guys can decide how you want to approach and all that fun stuff. Is there a gate, like a big gate anywhere that we can see, or do we just see like the wall? Yeah, the, the main road leads to a double gate, and uh, there's a side access gate you would be aware of as well. 
and also, I think we mentioned this during the Don't don't you have the light spell that you could? Yeah, I do. Awesome. Um, I've currently left it as daylight since you guys didn't said you were just going to come during the day. Oh, gotcha. I, I must have missed that power when I was yeah. running that. I mean, you can come at night if that's what you prefer. But I think two of the players can't see anything at night. I cannot. Yeah. Um, uh oh, we lost Tenta. God damn it, y'all. <laughs> yeah, I'm blind as a bat at night, too, so don't feel bad. Is the place, like, lit up in any kind of way, or... I... Uh, not currently. It looks like there's uh, zombies roaming around the farmlands, okay. uh, but you can approach the, like, main estate and sort of avoid them. Uh, let's see. The road leads to a low valley filled with grain fields. Despite the harsh climate, the crops are healthy and vibrant. Uh, narrow paths branch from the road and into the fields, but the road itself leads to a sturdy wrought iron gate and a 20-foot high wall of weathered red stone. Uh, several low stone buildings stand silently around the trampled yard beyond the gate, where two human corpses in soiled ragged clothes lie. One sprawls face down in the dirt, and the other slumps on the gate with its arms hanging through its head jammed awkwardly against a small gap between the iron gates. So I believe you can see those two corpses. Right there? Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, since I can't see too well, I'm gonna make my way up to the gate and like try to get the best look inside um, as possible. Okay. Uh, as you approach the gates, uh, the corpses stir to life as a uh, new stimuli has approached them. Uh, it looks like they were a pair of zombies that uh, had gone into a stupor before anything else came to them. Just having to lay down. So we'll go ahead and uh, go into initiative. that blind or I uh, know you just uh, can roll initiative if you were doing anything specific as you approached um, we can discuss that you can roll something besides perception for initiative if you were like trying to avoid notice you can roll stealth if you want I mean I'm in my my uniform so uh, <laughs> there's no point in me rolling stealthy so I'm, I'm going to the gate I just got disappointed. I saw one of the, like, when I hit roll on the uh, boundary, I saw one of the dice roll. It was Salvatore's dice. I was like, yeah, I got a 19 on the die roll. Okay. And then I go to the chat. And it's like, oh, that was someone else's dice. <laughs> Thanks, I'm, Salvatore. I am not thrilled with my... <laughs> I think we all have some combination of, like, red and gold dice. Yeah. yeah. Really, do we all, what, we all pick the same set for real? I mean, pretty damn close. For, for, surprisingly well, it's enough, it's all called Blood Lord, so everybody's gonna have like blood colored dice. Yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah I definitely. We really lean into this, dice. bro. I don't know what you expected. I, I would have the Blood Moon. Oh, cute. I'll change my dice color. All right, I'll roll for Dahlia for now. All right, so Vita, you were kind of... Uh, oh, it's paused. That's why you couldn't move. Like, where were you approaching from? Um, yeah, I'll say... I mean, I'll say I was with the... I was, you know, with the group. Um, okay. And I just just wanted to walk up to the... To the gate and look in um, with... Out of character. Like, just to get take advantage of kind of the line of sight things that Foundry does. So I wanted to get, like, a good look into like the property proper yeah so i think you said cregan would be in front normally yeah i That's was sort of plan how we were approaching yeah imagine salvatore and dahlia would be 
right behind us there. All right, we'll go with that from now. So it, it is an open gate, like it's not unlocked, but it is uh, like between the bars, you could cast spells or whatever through. Like it's a barred gate, so there's slats in between. And so the zombies are basically like trying to stick their arms through. They haven't figured out how to open a gate yet. Uh, one has it sort there's a, there are two gates that kind of meet in the middle and one zombie sort of like wedged itself between the two and it has gotten stuck there. So to even get inside, you probably need to get the zombie out of the way. The way he, he has his arms signing through two sides of the gate and that's kind of like kind of closing the gate because he hasn't realized he can just take one arm out for in order for it to swing. <laughs> All right, Salvatore, you're up. Uh, I mean, well, if they can't... Mm. I'll, I'll move right over here. Okay. And uh, let us put these zombies down. And let's cast a spell. So do um, Divine Lance, so like, call it Hellblade, and he'll take his scythe and hold it up in the air and do like a big four down slash and a glowing green scythe will, blade will like come out and fly at the one of the zombies on the left hand side. Well, Ergothoa is from Abaddon, so it's probably an Abaddon blade. That's That's fine. There's there's very different there's the abyss there's hell there's Abaddon there's so many different evil places to go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, roll damage instead of attack. Okay. Um, this is doing. Let's see. Well, it looks like you rolled the damage first. Yeah, yeah, I, I accidentally rolled the damage first. Okay, uh, that will definitely hit. Uh, what type of damage does it do? Uh, da, 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 da. Takes damage of the chosen alignment equal to 1d4. So what's your chosen alignment? Evil? Uh, yeah, probably evil. Alright. Well, that still is effective against these zombies. Uh, so the, your spinning uh, blade whirls off the end of your staff, and this swirling bit of light just like goes through the bars and slams into this thing's chest. Nice. And it kind of howls and blurbles and starts reaching towards you as you're like the new stimuli. They seem to be just really interested in whatever poked them last. Stay right, down. So I was moving to action cast, so I believe that was your turn. Yep. Um, let's see. This zombie is going to try and struggle with getting this gate open. It's going to make an athletics check to see if it can like pry itself from the gate. All right, it's able to like pull its arm out of one of the sides and the gates just starts like swinging wide open and uh, it'll start lurching its way towards you guys. So I believe these gates are, yeah, they're open. So it steps and that's pretty much all its action. But it approaches Vita since she was the one poking her face uh, towards the gate and she looked most, the most appetizing and alive. Mm, no argument here. All right, that's that zombie. Uh, now it's Boris. All right, so I am going. Damn it! The other side, real quick. Uh, since this zombie is close to me, I am going to activate my. Called uh, spell strike. Okay. Um, and so I'm gonna kind of, kind of center my stance, and you'll just kind of like see me draw my sword, and as I draw it, you'll see me kind of like hold my finger against the blade as I draw it out of the sheath, 
and you'll see these like blue runes start to form on it as I do it. And um, so that's going to be using the spell, right? Uh, yeah, like you make a... an attack roll with your weapon, and then if it hits, the spell also hits. Okay. Let's see. Feast or famine. <laughs> All right, so that one. Uh, oh boy, everything got doubled on your sheet. Public roll. Uh, yeah, attack rolls are public. Okay. You know All if you right. hit the thing or not. All right. Um... Yes. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. <laughs> Actually, that hits, because the zombies have terrible AC. Oh, all right, cool. Well, we're lucky then. So, that's a longsword plus um, shocking grasp. Okay, uh, so go ahead and click uh, damage on your sword. All right. And then go ahead and click the cast a spell button next to the spell. All right. And then it, it hits automatically since you hit with your weapon attack, so just go ahead and roll damage on it. Okay. Damn, that was pretty good. Oh, yeah. Nice. You might have taken out that zombie and no one hit. Some charred flesh. I don't think you have to worry about the persistent electricity damage after that <laughs> <laughs> roll. Oh yeah, that's that's more than enough to take out the zombie. The zombie like seems to resist some of your damage, but that's still more than enough to just overwhelm it. And so uh Voris just like pulls out his sword, slices into the zombie, and just lightning just fires out of his sword and it cooks this zombie alive you guys smell like the charred flesh of this like old rotting decaying thing uh it's it's a weird smell of cooking but also dead flesh um i'm gonna make sure none of my hair is singed i was standing right there um very right. important always make sure your hair is fine yeah, yeah. and then mm -hmm. i am going to uh let's see what is it uh, going to start into my arcane cascade from my okay. last action and then so like as I swing through with the sword and like you see the electricity just like explode into the zombie I just kind of like carry through and you see like as I bring the sword back towards my body I just kind of like draw the magic back into my hand and you see my hand start to just glow this blue and this like blue crackling energy is just kind of like around my hand you need to get a hammer and be thor <laughs> so, so under your actions if you click the little icon next to arcane cascade it'll link it to chat that'll get that'll give you a thing that you can add to your character as the stance buff oh, okay oh create action uh it should just like you it says oh, bam, under bam. actions right, there's gotcha. a little icon if you click on it, it should like add turn counter. into like a chat bubble Like on the the actions tab of your character sheet, the second one. Yeah. yeah. There's there strikes and actions, and they just clicked the little icon Grants next to Arcane stance. Cascade. Yeah, I, I I clicked it. I think it's granted to me now, right? No, click the one that's next to Arcane Cascade. That'll link it in chat. Oh, sorry. That one. Let's see. I don't see it linked yet. Oh. Fuck. It's the little square symbol with the little square inside it. You just click on that. It'll turn into like a little chat bubble when you mouse over it. Yeah, I double clicked it. It's just not posted in chat for some reason. Huh. There you go. It worked when I did it. There you go. Oh, there it goes. Oh, I did it twice. All right, and then see where it says Grant Stance. If you just drag that onto your token, it should apply that buff to your character. Okay, cool. Uh, and that would just be electricity? Uh, that's, uh, it was an evocation spell, I believe, so it's force damage. Uh, Is okay, it evocation? Cool. Yeah, evocation. Uh, yeah. 
the Shocking Grasp. Is... Yeah, Shocking Grasp is an evocation spell, so it's forced yeah. damage. Okay, so forced. All right. Sorry, guys. No worries. We're all learning here. I just think it's a good idea to link stuff in chat anyway, so then the people at home can see what things do. So, like, and when you're using your abilities, it's good to save. link them. All right, cool. Awesome. So he starts glowing with uh, power uh, from his strike. And then we're going to go to Vita. So the gate is uh, open now enough that you can get through. Um, okay. Uh... Ever the ambitious go-getter. Uh, I'm going to walk through the gate. Okay. Mm -hmm. gonna... Do I have to get, like, yeah, that's fine. Um, all right. I will make my way in. And uh, let's see. I guess I'm just going to try to see how well, like, it tracks me, like, as I go. Is this thing, like, a velociraptor? Does it really pay attention? Um and then in doing so, I'm going to try to faint. Oops. Okay. And target that one. Target this one. Uh, anything good? So faint does have the mental trait. Uh, I believe you would probably know that uh, mindless undead are immune to mental effects because they're not smart enough to okay. be fainted. Uh, all right. Then can't faint. Probably can't understand me. So, uh, yeah, I guess I'm just gonna have to. I guess I'm gonna have to stab it. Um, All right. Yeah, I'm gonna walk over, give it the old stabby stab, seeing how easily uh, Voris handled it. I like it. I like it. Yeah, that definitely hits. And then, uh... all right, I'll take it. All right, this is uh, piercing damage. All right, that takes full damage to piercing. All right, that's a uh, move and one attack. Okay. Uh, you have another action. Um, I'm trying to see. Can't see, like, there's nothing. These are the only things that we can see. Uh, otherwise. Uh, if you make a seek check as an action, you can, like, look for more things. Uh, you definitely hear more sounds of, like, zombies moving about the farm, but you don't see anything specifically without, like, seeking one out. Okay, um, then let's do... All right, I'm going to walk, stab, and then, uh, I guess, look around. Okay, um, there should be a seek action you can find in Foundry uh, if you search for seek. 30-foot cone or... Yeah, and that should let you, like, place the cone or place the area of effect. Like the cone originates from you, but if you if you're looking for farther away, you use the burst to like put it in an area. Um. Okay. Let's do that then. Uh, does it have to be? Oh, okay. The 15 foot is how big of an area, not how far it is, right? It, the cone originates from your body going out 15 feet in like a cone shape, but it should let you like. If you click seek and like okay. link it in no, chat, we're, we're it'll have do like the... place cone. Yeah, yeah, I was like, we're gonna do the cone. Um, cone zone. And then can I rotate it around? I want to look down, like into the. I think it's yeah, I... alter control or shift, and then mouse roll Oops. rotates it. But you have to have your mouse over the little starting point of the AOE. I think. Yeah, you want to be on the there's the, the two tokens on the left side there's the token one and then under it is measurement controls. The measurement controls are how you manipulate these things. I, want to, I was like, I want to rotate it. Uh, I know the only way I've ever rotated it is doing the I think it's control. Uh Mouse roll. It might be shift or alt. I mean. All right. You know what? The hell with this. I'm going to stab it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Control and mouse wheel okay. rotates it. Okay. 
then yeah, like 90 degrees south, like we're looking straight down. Um, make sure nothing's going to kind of sneak up on us. Like that? Yeah, perfect. Thank you. All right, go ahead and make a perception roll. Okay. Uh, make a blinds check. Okay, uh, you don't see anything specifically in that area, but you do get the sense that uh, some things are more alerted to the noise of combat that's been happening. Okay. Um, I'm going to tell everybody I sense there's probably more things here. Um, and then just keep a good distance away from the zombie I just stabbed, and that'll be it for me. Okay. So now we're on uh, Dahlia. Is she back? Yeah, trying to be. Yet. Oh, sorry. Trying to say be. something. There he is. Yeah, I'm. I'm here. I just can't get the foundry to load. Okay, well we can sort of theater the mind. It. You're basically just uh at the front gate of the complex. Um, and there's a couple zombies that were like right stuck in the front gate. Uh, mm -hmm. one of them uh, made it through, and Zvoris fried him with his uh uh. Magus powers, and Dahlia went and stabbed the other one that is still on the other side of the gate, so it's about like uh, 20 feet from you right now, currently. You mean Vita? Yeah, Vita <sighs> stabbed it. You're Dahlia, and you're 20 feet away. Yeah, and I'm gonna shoot it with the phase bolt. Okay. So Which I am. Cast. I'm trying to be able to Oh yeah, right. Found. Let me go ahead and click that for you while we're trying to figure it. It looks out. like it's gonna maybe load this time though. Okay, do you want me to roll your attack roll? Yeah, if you wouldn't mind. Consent is everything. Yeah, I don't wanna I don't wanna hold anything up and it's gonna be fun anyway. Alright, that definitely hits. Heck yeah. What did I get? You got five damage. Bam. She screams. Yeah. And a bit of force, like, whoa, comes out of her mouth, goes through the gate and smashes the zombie. Yeah. Any sort of cover that the gate would have provided for it being between you two is just the force bolt, just, or the phase bolt just goes right through it, knows exactly where to hit, and slams into the zombie. Purple energy just like rippling a hole in its chest. Nice. Okay, uh, Cregan. So, uh, first thing, um, Cregan is going to concentrate on his rage as it builds and builds. And just for the stream, boom, rage. But <laughs> he, um, let me just go and throw that effect on him. Um, and then he will move behind the zombie here, and then he will strike it, hopefully down. Okay. And boom. Oh, yeah. Nice. Let's go ahead and roll yeah. damage. Go ahead and click critical, and that should annihilate the zombie. Oh, yeah, max damage. Oh. This, Damn, bro. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So Cregan, flashes. super excited, just rushes into the farm and just swings his giant, like, sword glaive into this thing, and it just spatters into, like, pieces, and it just sprays all over you, Vita. Oh. All of your nice red dress. Oh, no. Oh. Well, that's why I wear red. Um, try, I'm going to try to wipe it off, like, my skin, but I'm hoping it'll blend into the dress. Yeah, you Pretty get good. most of the chunks off. You think it's going to take some, like, extra washing to get all the blood out, though. Ugh. All right, well... I after after the zombie falls, Cregan is going to look around and be like, Was that it? I need more! Well, but that's kind of the end of the stream since we can't see any other enemies. So. Okay, you can do like a seek check. 
like Vita did. Well, that was not the reactions. Right, oh, yeah, Rage moving. is an action. Yep. As soon as as soon as uh, as soon as I no longer have to worry about it being an action, that's that's when uh, you'll start to see one too. I bet. Anyways, that's it. Sorry. All right. So at the end of the combat or end of the round, uh, a couple more zombies come shambling around the corners. Um, not hide them. It makes it about there. This one is there to about there. So there, you guys are just out of reach. But two more are shambling towards you. And you guys do uh, see off to the south, uh, getting riled up, is a giant bull cow. Oh, no. Let me link his art to you because it's cool looking. Nice. Oh, dude. Oh, Sight sticking through him? That's brutal. Yeah, yeah, I have to say that is. I was thinking zombie cow, and I was thinking like a dairy cow with some ribs showing. <laughs> Same. Oh. That's no, her, this is a full on bull. Buddy. One of its horns just snaps off, it looks like. <laughs> that's her buddy. Aw. Yeah, oh. this guy's pretty awesome. I wish I could see. Everything's frozen. Yeah, I, I, I can, uh, send this black screen to you. right now. Oh. You can hear my words, though? We can yep. hear your words, yes. Womp womp. Right. That cow's pretty well, cool. Wish I could see. All right, Salvatore, we're back to you. Two more zombies approached, and you heard the loud mooing of the cow down below. <laughs> the mooing of the cows. The big... I think I was going to ask for some role play on the cow. Preach. <laughs> <laughs> I need to be versed. How's the cow sound? Perfect. Thanks. Okay. Well, let's move. <laughs> Fuck you, dude. Let's move. Move. <laughs> That's it. Show's canceled. We're out of here. <laughs> <laughs> We've peaked. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Didn't take long, y'all. <laughs> and then uh, let's cast uh, Abaddon's Blade at this guy. Nice. <clears throat> All right, go ahead and click the attack roll. Nice. Oh, yeah, that definitely hits. That's what I like to see in a bird. Ooh, all right. Not bad. Let's see. Max damage. Yep, that's uh, seven damage to that zombie. And that's, and that's all for my turn. Whirling blade slice just flies across the yard and slams into this creature, taking a big chunk out of its shoulder. Its arms just kind of hanging limply and still trying to like move it to grab something. Go down, you dog. All right, that was a uh, self friendly. I think this guy didn't get initiative rolled. All right, yeah, they roll terribly on initiative, so you guys will have a chance to kill them before they do anything. Sick. Bum, bum. It's dead. Uh, now it's Boris's turn. Boris, I lied in the chat. I just sent it for him. Huh. All right. Um. So either way, I gotta come. Uh. Let's see. What's that movement? Fifteen feet. That's not too bad. Why do I gotta go around? All right. Um, all right, so I'm going to go beside, uh, mm, our lady adventurer down here and take 
a shot at this this shambler right here. Okay. All right, and then so I guess I'll do another melee attack since I'm still keeping my my souped up. All right, so then I would just uh, hit longsword, and that'll uh, account for it since I still have it equipped. Yeah. All right, cool. So do that guy, and then hit straight. If you mouse over the token and hit T, it'll target the token, so then it'll automatically like compare its result to the AC of the target. But yeah, that, that definitely hits. So you can go ahead and roll damage on that guy. All right. Womp womp. All right. <laughs> Still. All right. Uh, are you doing slashing or piercing? Uh, piercing. Just kind of giving them the. Okay. The quick, the quick jab. So you slice into it, and like this, so the flash of energy on your sword like goes up your arm and just expands the wound just that tiny bit more, as it mm -hmm. kind of just forces it open. Yeah. And then, do I have to activate it again after I strike another time, or no? No, it's a stance, so you're it? pretty much in it for the rest of the combat, unless you decide to step out of it. Oh, okay, uh, you cool. can also spend an action to recharge your spell strike, uh, which will let you use it again on the next turn. Okay, so then I guess I will do. I'll take another slice at it. Okay. All right, yeah, that hits. All right. Thirteen damage. Ooh, all right. Oh yeah, you cut that thing down. Pla! You slice across its, uh, basically, it's like midsection, and like its intestines just kind of spill out on the ground, and like the the force of the blow and the magic on it just kind of like blows the two halves apart, as the other half just kind of slides across the ground. I'm gonna be very frustrated. I almost got shit on me again. <laughs> no, I, I, I put down the splash guard, dog. <laughs> we put the, we put the Gallagher, the, the, the Gallagher tarp out on this gun for you. I was like, excuse my, my lady. Flah! <laughs> Splatter! <laughs> Drop it down. Yeah, it's mostly because Cregan hit the thing for like double its life and was flanking it with you. <laughs> what I wouldn't give for, like, a poncho of dryness. <laughs> right? Poncho. All right. All right. Wait, where's All right. digitation when you need it? It's uh, Vita's turn. All right. Um, I'm going to make sure I didn't get any more various mess on me. Uh, I'm going to make the slide down here. Um, Craig, do you have reach or you do not? I do have reach. Okay. I, 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 as the other one, I couldn't reach because it's 15 feet away. I, I was thinking in terms of like okay. two squares yeah, you, away. Right. You should have flanking on it with Cregan. Beautiful. Um, I'm going to like casually step over, avoiding the big pile of goo that Cregan made and then the other pile of goo um, that Voris made. And then... Make sure you're targeting that one because it'll be smart and know that that's the one you're flanking yeah there we go uh we're gonna get in there and we're gonna get the old stabby stab and... all right come on baby i will take it yep that definitely hits okay and then uh yeah with the sneak attack oh nice uh -huh. um so you, you know exactly where to stab on this zombie. You basically, like, hit at one of its joints, and it kind of just, like, shambles over a bit, trying to, like, still stay standing as you're basically taking this thing apart. Um, I'm going to stab it, and then when I pull my sword out, I'm going to, like, wipe the end of it, like, on their, like, clothing. Okay. I don't know. I just don't want to be dirty. All right, so move, stab. Eh. Let's go ahead and give it another one. I trust Cregan and Dahlia behind me. Can get it done? Yeah. Nice. 
And then... 11 damage. Yeah, you took two big chunks out of this thing, and it's like barely holding together at this point. Um, and I'm going to look at Dahlia on the other side of the gate. Uh, she's ready for you, girl. And uh, that's going to be it for me. Okay. Were you able to get back in, Tenta? He looks frozen. Man, you West Coast boys today. <laughs> That's like the least flattering picture ever to be frozen in. Oh, I saw it. Let's go ahead and save him. Let's go ahead and save him that. All right. Uh, we'll go ahead and just have him throw like another phase bolt. So he'll move. That's 30 feet. Dolly needs to move at least a square in order to be within 30 feet of this thing. Oh, no. Now he's moving. Oh, Are you back? You back? Hey. You're muted. Muted. Ah. Nope. That... Nope. He froze again. Damn. That's all we got. Oh, Just like man. three frames. <laughs> and it was, he was muted during those things, too. <laughs> all right. We'll just have Dolly fire another phase bolt at the zombie. The classics. Oh. Oh, critical miss. She goes wide. She's obviously glitching out. You could see her low frames as she tries to attack, and it just goes wide. <laughs> she shot where she thought the zombie was like two screens ago. It's that meme with no ping. <laughs> yeah. All right, Kriegan. All right, Kriegan's ready to finish this one off. Um, he's going to uh, uh, see uh, Dahlia miss and be like, I'll show you how it's done and um, bring down his sword. Yep, that definitely right. hits. Almost a crit. Almost. Lowest right. damage, though. Definitely 11. enough damage, though. You're able to just cut this thing apart. Awesome. Vita sees it coming this time and just dodges the chunks of flesh as they come flying at her. Reflex save. All right. Do we want to take a... It's, it's been two hours. Do we want to take a break real quick? Yeah, that'll work. Uh, yeah. How long do you usually go? Like five-minute break or ten-minute break? Uh, ten, usually. Okay. So we'll <laughs> do a ten-minute break and meet back at uh, 7.50 my time. I guess that's 9.50 your time. I mean... Not 50, uh, 9, 10. Yes. Your time. That works. Yeah. Um, all right. So we're going to do a little technical maintenance. We're going to get our boy back and up and running. We're going to take about a 10-minute break. It is 8.58 Eastern time. Uh, we'll be back in about 10 minutes. Thanks for watching our big uh, premiere tonight. Um, to everybody watching, thank you so much. And we will be back uh, in just about 10 minutes. See you then. Hopefully, we'll see you on the other side. Bye-bye. Be right back. Shit, there we go. All right, we are back from our real life short rest. Uh, before we went to break, we're at the uh, weird farm, uh, some zombies, and now a really pissed off cow still in the future. Um, and with that, we'll turn it back over to our GM, Steven. Uh, take it away. All righty, uh, so you have successfully dispatched those groups of zombies. Uh, this uh, cow down here, uh, Mosh Guda, as you were told his name was, seems to have taken notice of you and starts moving slowly in your direction he hasn't fully spotted you but he heard sounds of combat and is just going to investigate so you guys have a time to prepare or position yourselves or however you want to handle it All right. basically um, you have about a round okay um you're thinking <laughs> Regan... <Thank> you cover <laughs> <laughs> Kriegan's going to be like uh, like a matador, um, except oh, instead of ra waving a red flag, he's going to be like, over here. I'm going to stand behind you being encouraging as all get out. You get it, Kriegan. You got this. Blah, -de -de blah. I'm going to stand back here behind this building uh, in case that bull does what bulls do. But I, believe, I believe in you. 
just to give you a bit more space, I will stand over here. That way you can have, oh, cool. have more me. options as far as uh, oh, the man. battlefield. Far for me to walk, but okay. Oh, well, I'll tell you what. How about... How about, how about there? That'll work. I like okay. it. Perfect. I will be up one square just so, like, you know, he can't see it until he's already in my face. Right. The whole time I'm standing behind think... the... No, no, over there. Yes, yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah, right, duck yeah. behind the building. Salvatore and Dahlia, like... is there any specific place you want to be? Um, wanna... I'm going to be where I currently am, but I'm going to cast um, Animate Dead right here in this square. Okay. And bring a zombie shambler right there to just give like another target maybe it'll go for it and then Cregan can get a nice swing on it as it like a broadside swing as it runs in okay maybe and, and dahlia i'd like to the uh how tall is this little gate thing here or fence? Uh, the fate and against the gate and the fence is uh 20 feet tall but they're 20 they're feet tall we can wow go. yeah but can i fit through sideways I mean, it opens. You can just walk through it. <laughs> oh, 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 okay. Well, then, shit. All right. I'll just walk on through. That's how everybody else got in. That makes sense, then. I'll walk on through, and uh, I'm going to climb up to the rooftop over here next to Vita. Okay. And stand up there and see what I can see from up there. All right. Climbing will be an athletics check. Okay. Uh, will someone please roll that for me? Alrighty. And Nick, I have a feeling I'm gonna end up using one of your healing <laughs> spells. Uh, just a guess. <laughs> oh yeah, you make it up on top of the roof, no problem. It's about a ten foot tall building. All right. She does like a Jackie Chan, one foot in front of the other, grabs the roof and. Flings herself up on top. I'll put you like adjacent to the roof because otherwise you're just clipping into the building. There you go. That's cool. As long as we know I'm up there, that's good enough for me. And uh, for the last part of my round, uh, Moody appears. He was a tattoo and now he's an actual bat sitting on my shoulder. <laughs> All right, your little bat familiar crawls its way out of your tattoo. I was like, I was mm -hmm. here the whole time, guys. <laughs> he doesn't talk. Hey, no, but that's definitely what he would say. <laughs> and then because it's uh, it as actually can say. talk, right? Because it's the hatred thing. Huh? It, it can actually talk, can it? Because it's the hatred. It thing? can talk to me if I'm touching him. Gotcha. Yeah, when depending on what on ability he gave it, he could talk. I don't think he's given it the ability to talk, though. Gotcha. No. I gave it touch, uh, touch talk. I can talk to him when he's hanging out with me. Next hell, but I've heard. All right. Uh, so down by the bowl, you see a low wooden fence fallen in many places with all its gates thrown open. Uh, the once enclosed yard is a wide dirt yard. The dirt is trampled to an unsettling amount of blood and gore. Uh, various parts of roughly five corpses, you would guess, lie strewn about. Uh, most of them trampled into mangled flesh and bones. It seems like once these corpse, this cow killed these, whatever they were, it just stomped the corpses into oblivion. So it's a pissed off cow. He's unhappy. All right, so we'll go ahead and roll initiative for everybody. Were they alive before he, like, were they quick before they killed him, or did he stomp on, like, some zombies? That's such a mess at this point, you'd have to go over there and investigate to oh. have any idea. Ooh, no, I'm not that curious. Can I can I try to make an impression on this um this bull before you it can comes to Texas? You can try. <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and roll initiative. Oh, dude, rolling hot with Love the initiative. It. Someone. Please roll Dahlia's initiative. Yep. <laughs> we won't do it. Oh, Kill sad. It. Then I guess I go last. No, you're going first. Zombie, I believe, acts on your turn, so it shouldn't be on initiative. 
Oh, I'm going first. Wow, look at that. Woo! I made sure nobody looked up your dress while you were climbing. <laughs> thank you, thank you. I appreciate your maintaining my modesty. You guys take the All right. Way. So you're up off on the roof, uh, staring down at this thing. Yep. I'm going to walk to the edge of the roof and take a good look at the cow. All stealthy, though. I don't want him looking at me. I'm trying to do my best. Okay, uh, so if you're sneaking, you move at half speed. Okay. So you can get about... I think you have 25 feet movement. Yeah, so you yeah. get about 10 feet. Okay, that's cool. As long as I do it sneaky style. Are you want to do like a recall knowledge on the cow? Is that what you're looking for? Uh, basically just looking at when I'm fighting. Trying to okay. get a better look at the cow, basically. That's all. Yeah, you see like the hunks of flesh has been like rotting off this thing. It has a huge scythe just impaled through its side that it doesn't even seem to pay any mind. Uh, it has like uh, loops and uh, kind of embedded into its flesh that they would tie ropes to for like uh, farming equipment and that sort of stuff and most of the roofs seem like torn off and are just kind of like dragging behind it at this point. Ugh. Even Dahlia cringes a little bit at this sight. Um, like it's a zombie, so it doesn't care. So they just stick the hoops like right into its flesh. And the, and the yeah, I mean, why not? But the fence is all down, and he can move about freely. Basically, yeah, it's pretty much all stomped down. He's just gone nuts and destroyed like everything that he possibly could. Everything that was like an epitome earlier in his life, he's like taking revenge on it now. It looks like. Oh well, that's fair. <laughs> Dahlia respects that level of. Uh, personal cleansing um she's gonna stay crouched on the roof in the darkness and wait for the other guys to make their move okay uh, do you want to cast something like shield or something like that yeah i'm gonna i definitely should cast shield <laughs> yeah i'll cast shield all right we'll go ahead and put shield on you it's just a little shadowy black shield that just goes whoa. It looks like a like almost like a portable hole over my hand. Yeah, these like black misty vapors just surround you and kind of envelop you in a cocoon of protection. Mm-hmm. All right, Salvatore. Okay. Um, I will have Trevor the zombie shambler um, just kind of make his way forward towards the pen. And he has a move of 20, I believe. Um, let me see. No, Shamblers have 25. They're just slowed, so they have right. one well, minus one action. Uh, and then... Um... Which actually, according to the errata, means that they only get like one action on your turn, not two. Okay, so yeah, I'll just have a move move up there and just like kind of maybe flail his arms around Rawr! just to see if he can catch the old Mosquito's attention it seems to say and uh, I'll move over here behind this building okay and so that's one action to command and one action to move then let's Cast um, guidance on Boris because he's closest to me. Okay, uh, go go ahead and go, click cast on it. He gets guidance and guidance immunity. So Boris, that basically will give you a plus one on your next action. That involves a die roll. And that just kind of looks like a like a toxic green mist that kind of just like settles over you. Nice. It's toxic green, but it's somehow empowering. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Lime, like lime green. It's like Sprite. Like my ex. Yeah. <laughs> like. <laughs> There's like a misty effervescence. I like it. I dig it. I dig it. <clears throat> All right. 
All right, Vita, what are you up to? I don't know. <laughs> I'm wearing red, which is bad. Um, <laughs> I've I've been to Pamplona. Know how that goes. Um, is it really red though? If you're covered in zombie guts at this point? I mean, I'm covered in it's like, green. Uh, I was like, plus my dress like kind of swishes at the bottom. There's just a lot going on. Um. Can I just go after Cregan in the kind of macabre hope that it charges him and I don't have to go as far? Sure, uh, we can stall your turn to after Sweet. Cregan. <laughs> Pass! <laughs> so, Cregan. So sorry, that's me. Uh, Cregan mm. will move here with one action. He's going to take the ready action that if most Guta comes within reach, so anywhere like in this area, or you know, I guess in that area too, if it goes after the zombie, Trigan is going to try to trip it. He's gonna aim for the legs. Nice. Okay, so you're ready in action basically. Yeah, two actions to ready, correct. The trip a quadruped. I think it's two actions and a reaction. Gotta go high, ready. man. I clip it by the soul. But shoulder. I imagine it's gonna charge at me, so I just charge and I'm just gonna kneecap it. And I'll be like, "Oh my knee," you know. <laughs> <laughs> Moo, no. Oh, he no. took his adventurous spirit away. <laughs> yeah, he'll never <laughs> roam the grasslands. Bro, this now. thing has a sight sticking out of it. Like chopping in the knee is not gonna suddenly like change its perspective. I don't know. At, at the rib cage is one thing. A knee. Have you ever walked on a knee that hurts? It's not fun. I've also never had something yeah. like physically sticking out of me. <laughs> All right. All right. So now it's back to Vita's turn. <laughs> Time to put up or shut up. Okay. Got it. Damn it. Now, um, if it gets tripped, then you still can sneak attack because it'll still be flat footed. So. Um, I am going. To... I gotta see where Cregan is. Yeah. I'm gonna go like. Oh. oh I gotta go out, man. Um, I'm just gonna go here. Oh! Oh, no, it hasn't attacked anybody. I wanna shoot it with a bow and arrow and be a, be a dick about it. Eh. Okay, so you want to pull out your bow? Uh, I, I don't want to, like, uh, all right, fine. <laughs> <laughs> you could delay until after the cow's turn. No, I don't want to keep, like, passing like I'm just indecisive as hell. That sucks. Um, well, you could just say I want to delay and then just tell me when you want to take your turn. No, I'm, I'm going to go ahead. We're going to shoot this thing. All right. So you spend an action to pull out your bow. Yes. Uh, an action to step out, and then I'm going to shoot this damn thing. Let's do this. Do not like that. That is a miss. You go wide. All right. Well, all right. Move. Kyle just kind of looks up as the arrow flies over its head. It's like, move? Does it look <laughs> more mad? It just looks confused, like you threw something at it and missed. Okay, cool. I'll take that. Uh, then that will be <laughs> that will be the end of like the least productive turn ever. <laughs> All right, Boris. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I'm going to. Go to this house over here. Hey, all your cows loose. <laughs> um, it it doesn't look like it's made any sort of like it's seen us, right? Uh, yeah. At this point, it sees you guys approaching it. But it looks the, like it, it's the... setting up to do its bull rush charge. 
Right. Oh, it is setting up to its charge? Okay, cool. That's why I felt bad. Oh, okay. It moved yeah, at you. Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, hmm. Let's see. And it is now... Is that 35 feet? 45 feet. Okay. So I already did my movement. Let's see. What do I want to do now? Let's go ahead Loot. and... Uh, I'm gonna ready chill touch. Okay. Or no, I guess I can't. I can't ready. Well, I, could I ready like ready a uh, spell like that? Uh, you can only ready a single action, so you can't ready a two-action spell. Okay. Okay. Um. Uh, all right. I guess I'm gonna wait to see what the bull does. Cause I'm still kind of hesitant to see if it, if it is really even hostile. You know, me being a guard, I'm, I'm still kind of, whoa, man. <laughs> Let's let the bull be the bull, man. Krieg is about to find okay. out. Yeah, they, you know, and I'm I'm a I'm the kind of guy that would laugh at that. So you could potentially like cast shield and get in your arcane cast aid stance or something like that. Um, I will cast shield though. That that's a that's a that's a good idea. So let's okay. Let's go ahead and do that. And you also, since you're holding a shield, you can use the raise a shield act to action to give yourself plus two AC as well, if you'd like. Why the hell not? There you go. So we'll go ahead and put raise a shield on you. Top level. Alrighty, uh, so that's uh, Boris's turn. Now it's Mashguda's turn. And the cow oh, just shit. like luck, snuffs Regan. and stamps its foot and just puts its head down with its one massive horn and just charges forward. And I'll trip that when it gets close. Or right. drop you with it. All right, now I don't feel as All right. Uh, <laughs> go ahead and target it and roll a trip check against it. Yeah. That's crazy. You're crazy, dude. I'm gonna try it. Otherwise, I'm gonna take some damages. Ooh. 23. Oh, boy. That is a success. So you actually knock him prone. Oh, I didn't target it. But... And that would be against a strength flex. Uh, I think athletic. Let yeah. me send that to chat. It's I don't I think this is the first time I've ever actually tripped something. Um, yeah, so against the target's reflex DC. Oh, in that oh. case, that's a crit. Does anything special happen on a crit? The target falls, uh, lands prone, and takes one d six bludgeoning damage. Ooh. Uh, it rolled. I'll go with you. Oh. Roll. Oh, okay. Yeah. I go didn't notice my... you had it posted. All right. Awesome. Actually, it has damage resistance, and this falls under the all damage category, so I think it doesn't take damage, but it still slams face first into the ground. Yeah, it's still prone. It was going to use its special combo, like run and charge and stab thing, but instead, like, you trip it and basically interrupt it, so now it has to spend its last action standing up instead. Oh, yeah. Nice job. <laughs> Woo! Has damage resistance. What the? Yeah, I'm not. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like it. I hate dead, it. It's, it's a dead bull, dude. What do you expect? Yep. All right. Well, I'm, I got, a, I got I'm a dead person, and I don't uh, have it. <laughs> to be fair, I I don't know exactly how tough this thing is, but I don't imagine one damage is going to make a big difference at the end of, at the, well, end of the day. It will help eventually. Eventually. Yeah, especially if I can't do zero. <laughs> 
damage resistance. Oh wait, that only means half, right? So if you did two damage, you would have taken something. In in Pathfinder, it, oh, it, it if something has a resistance, it'll be like I don't know, resistance ten, and then it just subtracts ten damage from what you did. For yeah, it's a threat has... reduction. It's not half. It's yeah. three point five style. Yeah. And what, we and slowly eat away at that 10, or you have to get past 10 to actually do damage? You have to get past 10 to actually oh, do damage. Oh, fucking hell. All and right. It, I think Steven said, it, you said, it was, I know this is metagaming, but it's all damage, he said? Maybe. He don't, he don't well, know. He's, anyways, he's, not, he's not there. If you he's want to know, make a recall enough. knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> I did my trick. I need to recall anyways, my recall <laughs> knowledge is in the game to learn this crap. <laughs> um, anyways, if a resistance applies to two or more things, then you subtract it for each damage type. So if it had resistance to, uh, I don't know, um, physical three, right. and you had slashing two damage and bludgeoning four damage, it would only take one damage. All right. I have to stab the shit out of this thing. Got it. Yeah. All right. Oh. So. All right. So we're back to Dolly's turn. Yeah. Sorry for that. I'll just... All right. Um. I can't quite tell how far away I am from the moo here. Uh, you uh, are 20 feet. 20 feet. Excellent. Should be in the range of all your spells. Yes. All of them. Um, let's go ahead and hit it with a, uh, a haunting hit. Or no. A biting word. Yeah. Let's target him with a biting word. Can you say moo in a shitty tone? You're a bad cat. Yeah. All yeah, fucking sarcastic. <laughs> All right. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, so let's go ahead and go ahead and roll the attack so, roll for that. That's another scream effect that she's <sighs> right at the cow. It looks like you rolled a miss. That's fair so you scream at the cow and your like so. voice manifest as these sonic waves to the air but it just kind of the cow kind of just shrugs it off this shit just, just unaffected by it well what just happened i think somehow we... tenta became really big on screen my laptop just uh something happened all right it's okay uh yeah. you got one more action um hide <laughs> okay uh go ahead and make a still all right i guess i'll make the stealth check for you all right you feel like you've done an effective job of hiding oh i see what happened it kicked me out of one zoom and put me into another Zoom. No, I okay. think the screen sharing just stopped. Yeah. yeah. It was the I think it's the streaming laptop. Yeah. Has is having a moment. Oh, it am I indeed. still giant? Uh, it's um, just doing that regular Zoom thing where the whoever's talking becomes the big center focus. All right, Salvatore. Um, he'll move. Stop yelling at me. And then we'll hit him with another Abaddon's Blade. So whirl his um, scythe around his head and bring it down in like a big arcing slash in front of him. The... It looks like you're still out of range. It's a forty yeah. foot. You're forty feet currently away from it. Saw that. Um, was the... his Pathfinder counts diagonals is like five, ten. Oh yeah, okay. Alternating, <laughs> so it's five, fifteen, twenty. Am I sixty feet close? Close enough to do days? Does it have currently to... forty feet. It looks like. Okay, so let's do days on him then. Okay. So let's target this bath daddy. Done deal. All right. 
right, so it makes a, it's a mental, I think it's immune to mental effects, unfortunately. That's BS. So you cast your spell, trying to like daze its mind, and it's just like stares at you like what mind? <laughs> okay, nice. He just does spirit, just over there doing spirit fingers, and then nothing's yeah. happening. He'll feel that in the morning. Yeah, that's what, that's my turn. All right, uh, Cregan, you got a cow um, in your face that you just tripped and is now pissed off at you real bad. Yeah, I am going to strike it this time after successfully knocking it to its face. But, you know, I don't stand up. But... Yes. Nice. Yeah, that hits. So I give it a good slash. Hopefully it's a good slash. All right. It takes uh, most of that damage. Awesome. Um, and then uh, for my second action, I'm going to attempt to trip it again. Wait, why did I trig and take the damage? That's not right. Let me put that temp HP back up to my rage. Sorry about awesome. that. No, it's wrong. token targeted. Totally fine. Let's do that trip. Oh, I didn't do that at map, so whatever this is, subtract five. Uh, I don't think I can do it at multiple pack that will be on my seat, actually. Yeah. Uh, you should be able to, I think, do map if you put as as the action on your sheet. It is on my sheet, but um, it doesn't have any button for it. Just has I can click the athletics thing. All uh, right. And now I can add in a multiple attack penalty as far as like manually, so I can do it that way. It just I didn't do it for that particular roll. There's not like a button that says man. All right. Five. So that was a yeah. trip 13. attack. You said. Yeah, 13. All right, yeah, uh, it has crappy reflex, so you do trip it again. Yes. Nice. Awesome. Um, and for my third action, I am going to... Uh, it, it's mindless, isn't it? So it would be immune to, like, demoralized actions. No. You would assume so. Yeah. You don't know. You were in its brain. Uh, I am going to try to recall knowledge. What kind of check would that be? Uh, you can do religion, unless you have like a specific cow lore, or zombie lore. <laughs> no, I don't no. have any of that, but I'll go for it anyways. Cause I got Holstein lore. I'm at, neg I'm at negative 10, <laughs> Matt, so that's about the only thing I can do at this point. I mean, you could aid someone if you want. Also. Oh, I would... I already hit the button when you said that. Uh, it is up to you. Aid is an excellent idea. Uh, I had forgotten about it, but I uh, did already roll that, so it's up to you what you how you like to do that. Well, you're supposed to do recall knowledge as a secret check, so we can go ahead and say you didn't do awesome. that. And if you want to aid, like who yeah. do you want to aid? Uh, Cregan. The zombie chamber is the only one close, so Cregan will try to. Aid it. Okay. And that's just. I would aid someone else, but I'm just not 100% sure how that works. Because this zombie sampler, it's prone. It's going to be able to get flat footed. So, yeah. Anyway, sorry. In my turn. All right, Vita. All right. Um, I felt bad for shooting at the cow a minute ago. Um, but now that it's charged at Cregan, uh, I'm going to slide over uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot the thing. Don't know how okay. successful I will be. Not very. Nope. No. Remember, you got hero points if you want to use them. Do I want to use them shooting at a cow? No. Um... And I'm just going to take a second shot just because I want to stay back here. Okay. Okay. There we go. There you go. All right. I'll you hit. It. Exactly because it got tripped and is flat-footed. So Cregan did his work for you. Thanks, buddy. 
Um, Which means you also get your sneak attack, too. Yes. Is that doing Every plus one matters, as they say. It does. Exactly. All right, so it'll just take a... Okay. That amount of damage. That's fine. So, uh, I don't know if there's a way to prevent this. The foundry told us how much damage it took, so that kind of... Oh no, you're gonna it. do math. It's fine. That's why. It's there. Okay. 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 I just um, want to make sure there wasn't. Right. Yeah. You know, Move. That was intended. Miss shot. Hit shot. I'm good. All right, yeah, so you put an arrow in the side to go next to the scythe, and it's just sticking out of the side of the cow at this point. It's got a collection. The cow doesn't even, like, hardly seem to notice at this point. It's, it's like, missing half its side. I don't think an arrow's going to... It's going to eventually take it down, but it doesn't really care that much at this point. That's fine. This cow is rude. That's fine. <sighs> Sorry, right, Lewis. I'm good. So I am going to... Sure. That's my movement to there. And then that puts me within. Um, and then I'm going to cast Produce Flame. Nice. Okay. So how do you produce this flame? So, like, as you saw, um, like, with my, when I drew my sword, I kind of, like, had my hand on the, the scabbard. Um, you just kind of, like, see me kind of, like, draw my hand from my hip, and you just see this, like, slowly start to glow, like, this, just this real fine light. And then, like, from, like, between the pointer finger and the thumb, you just see this light light, and it starts to go from white to orange to this, just this, this, like, light blue, like, almost, like, clear flame, and it just shoots out towards him. Nice. So if you mouse over his token and hit T, it should target him, so when you make your attack roll, it'll apply it against the AC automatically. And go ahead and just click the attack on the thing in chat now. Nice. Right. So yeah, your fireball just hits the side of this cow and spreads flames across it. I go ahead and roll damage. Nice. Uh, for four damage. So it doesn't take as much damage as you'd think, but it seems like it's been resisting everything you guys have thrown at it so far. It's all right. It's taking it. All right, now it gets to go. It'll spend one action to stand up as it keeps getting knocked prone. I think you had me take dam that damage. Uh, dang it. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> You got an alley on your hand. It's because every time Foundry switches turns, it switches to selecting whatever token's turn it is, and then that's the token <laughs> that I have selected on my screen. Hard. It's going to be difficult. <laughs> uh, all right. So the cow stands up as one of its actions, um, and then it's going to just jam its horn right into Kree again. Oh. Ooh. What do we get? Ooh. <laughs> oh, that that is uh, very close to being a very painful hit. Yeah, that was like almost a crit. Yeah, one one away. That is scary. It... Oh, and it rolls a one on damage. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> oh, do I have that fancy damage resistance? Okay. <laughs> do I get it too? <laughs> nope. Once you get You're a sight stick, cow zombies resistance. Yeah, once you get the sight sticking out of you, then you do what you want. 
Well, maybe if, like, you let the cow kill you and turn you into a zombie cow, then maybe you'll get its power. So you think maybe you should just stick your head in its mouth? Hmm. Yes. Uh, hmm. Th there goes my temp HP, so at least there's that. I'm still mostly full. All right, so that's uh, its turn. Because it only had two actions, because it's permanently slowed, because it's a zombie. So, Dahlia. Yes, another phase bolt at the cowman. All right. <laughs> another phase She's... bolt, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> another phase bolt, good sir. <laughs> Oh. That hits. Nice. Four. Bam! Seven damage. Hell yeah, me and Rhett rolled in there like, what, <laughs> motherfucker? <laughs> Alright, and you got one more action? Uh, hide. <laughs> okay. Are you still on the roof? ever be seen. Yeah, I am. What are you worried? Is he going to fly up there? <laughs> I don't want him to... There's things that nice. he could do. Hey, there's All some right. stuff, man. All right. Yeah. You're, you're feeling sneaky. Yeah. It's, I'm witchy. I'm sneaky. I'm, that's what I do. <laughs> Just, Just so you're aware that there's a, a hidden stealth check that is rolled on my end to see how well you're hiding. And yeah. you don't know how well you're hiding, but I know how well you're hiding. You're just lurking. You just you assume you're that. doing well every time because you don't know. You're like, oh yeah, they can't see me. No, I'm doing a great job. Yeah. I'm Nailed full it. of confidence right now, so that's all that matters. <laughs> really feeling it. All right, Salvatore. Um, let's send old Trevor um, over and to this cow and have him attack it. Oh, no, because he, he can only move, right? Yeah, he's gets one action, but you can have him oh, flank for Kriegan's yeah, let's future. Have him, yeah, let's have him flank the, uh, um, the mad cow. Okay. And then with my rest of my turns, I will cast uh, Admonishing Ray. And What's the range on that? 60 feet. Okay, cool. And this one will flavor like, uh, so raise my scythe up super high in the air and just bring it down and like a giant green like fly moth thing that looks like Urgothoa's uh, holy symbol will fly out of it and try to hit it. Nice. So this fly with a skull on the back of it just flies darting towards the cow. Let's go ahead and uh, do the attack roll. All that right. Looks like it hit. Ooh. So close. Almost. Ooh. Two. Two damage. <laughs> Two whole damage, wow. Yes. So the, the ray just shoots out and the fly slams into the side of the cow and the cow doesn't even like flinch from it. <laughs> I'm gonna throw on my queen! <clears throat> More power, please. <laughs> and that's, that's it for me. Alright, uh, Cregan's turn. Awesome. Uh at this level, my trip attempts are the same as my strikes, so I'll just use my strikes. I'll just specifically say what I'm doing. That way, it'll automatically do the map. Does that sound good to you? Okay. Okay, first first one will be a strike. The second one will be a, a trip. Does that sound good? Sounds good. Awesome. So let me do this. Nice. Not take. Yep, that definitely hits. Awesome. Do some 13 slashings. Ish. And then this will be the trip against the reflex. And that was a great roll. That is including the multiple attack penalty. Slam. And then with my third action okay I think I set the zombie as an ally so hopefully you're, it's, it's not reading the flanking currently but it should be alright so we got it hit once for 13 and does roll flanking, damage on the second one does flanking or is, or is that a trip attack um, that is a trip attack does flanking okay. affect reflex saves uh, no it would just affect your chance to hit gotcha um, 
Cregan will uh yeah Voris goes before Anna just kind of um one action to move Cregan right there so he can allow Voris to flank and to still let the zombie shambler flank um well, and it's a large a... creature, so you could still technically flank it with a zombie, and he can stand right next to you and also flank it with a zombie. Oh, that's right. Uh, in that case, I will aid Boris. What? Does he? Can he move? Yeah, that's exactly 25 feet to that spot. So, uh, I... Kriegan will aid Boris. Thank you for reminding me of that roll. I forgot that. All right. Yeah. So the cow is prone again. You can Poor do cow. it, buddy! <laughs> You're basically the... having its actions each turn. <laughs> the cow is prone yeah. again. <laughs> I I had thought this would be a good idea, and it's turning out so much better than I thought. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. All right, Vita. So prone cow. Um, we're gonna take advantage, and we're just gonna plug away from a distance. No. Ooh. Ooh. Nope, yeah. your arrow goes wide. That's fine. Uh, it doesn't even look at it this time. It's still yeah. focused on Cregan, who just keeps annoying it. Um, all right. My knee. Yeah. I'm just going to shoot it again. All right. Yeah. Do there it we again. go. There Special we go. 20. All right. Nice. Wham! And with the multiple attack penalty, what? Uh, Wham! Get that deadly D10 in there. Nice. That's a ton of damage. Hell yeah, it is. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Took me a second. It looks like he actually takes extra damage from this uh, critical hit. Nice. Oh, hell yeah. God damn. Wham! So you fire it like just right in the thing's eye, and it's just like so pissed off at this point. Oh it's shit! It's just like on the ground, and and its legs are flailing. It's like, it is a it is a mad cow. It's also an almost dead dead cow. Uh, and then I'm gonna. That was awesome. I'm gonna slide up, like right underneath uh, Dahlia. Like, did you okay. see that? That was great. And I'll look down from the roof. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then uh, that's going to be it. And I'm hoping uh, hoping the police come to save my damsel in distress ass right about now. That's, okay. That's going to be it for me. Get him, Boris. All right. Um, right. I'm going to go ahead and move to here. If you move over here, you can flank it with a zombie. If you move here, you can flank it with Kriegan. Well, it, since it's prone, I guess it's flat-footed regardless. Yeah, it's, well, it's going to be the same penalty, I guess. If it it's has to be not. with Kriegan because I can't. It, it would take me two movements to move over there with the zombie. Yeah. All right, so I'll move over there, and then. Look at you guys get along. And. Beauties. Attack it. Okay. Blood Brothers. <laughs> Frenemies. Frenemies. <laughs> Aww. Nice. Nice. All right. So that's a uh, that's a hit. Alright. Are you doing a spell strike or just a regular attack? Uh, just a regular attack. The spell strike I think wore off after. Well, the spell well, strike, it... uh, you can recharge uh, after you do it. You just got to spend an action to recharge it. Or if you do, like, your focus spell, that'll recharge it as well. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, it'll be just a, the regular okay. hit for this one. And then uh, I will recharge my um, spell strike. Okay. 
for my last action. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so the cow will once again try and stand up. And then it will slam its horn into Cregan again, because Cregan's really driving it nuts. Damn it. <laughs> you bastard. That's still my hat. Oh. Damn. At like least I'm getting lucky on, on damage the dice. Yeah. Uh, that takes me to about half. So it just slams its horn into your chest, just like gushing through the side of you with like blood dripping down through your armor. Friggin' will grit his teeth and just like yell at it. It like yells back. Love it. All right, then we're back to the top with Dahlia. Are you there, Tenta? <laughs> yep, I'm here. I'm here. It's your turn. Sorry, it just started snowing. Nice. So, what? So I was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> Oklahoma, dude. Um, yeah, it snowed here the past couple days. It's been melting off today. Oh, uh, really? It was supposed to snow here earlier. It didn't, but finally did now, I guess. Um... Let's do another phase bolt at the uh, the cow. That's that's good. Sounds good. Go ahead and cast that. Thank you, sir. No. Miss. Wow. It was right by him. Yeah, the purple energy just like shoots out from your hand and just flies, and the cow just ducks its head down and it spatters across the ground next to it. Damn it. She uh, hides again. All right. We'll do our secret stealth check. You're doing great at hiding. You feel like you're a ghost at this point. Heck the rest yeah. of you are like, where'd Dahlia go? <laughs> <laughs> this is absolutely going to get me killed one of these times. I know it. Salvatore. <laughs> Uh, let's have Trevor lash out at the Moss Gouda. All right. Bro, if Trevor gets the kill. <laughs> he might. Trevor's a badass. All right. You want a bite or a punch? Oh, let's bite him. <laughs> oh, wait. No, you can't. Oh, wait. Since a zombie has to have a grab to restrain, so it has to grab first. Wow. So let's <laughs> punch him. Oh, bro, that's aggressive dice. Ooh, hits. Bro. Right. All because of the flanking. Does the zombie do it? Close. Ah. Oh. Oh. Uh, then I will move Kiar and um, let's cast Guidance on Cregan. Okay. So Cregan gets a plus one on his next attack. And that's it. Those are my three turns. All right, Cregan. All right. I almost Ooh. have a custom trip thing up. Uh, almost. So I will. Use that this time. I, I think it'll work. Um, I'm gonna attack it with the first strike. Uh, with the my sword. Ace. Nice. Chris. That might Very just do good. it, actually. Yeah, that's that's oh! way too much damage. Wow. So, wow. So how do you kill this cow to close us out? Um, <laughs> brutal. I think, 
I think as it lunges at me with its horns, Cregan will like sidestep it and like bring an upward cut with the snapped blade to go up its throat, which I know it's kind of already dead, but kind of just take its head off as I just cleave through its head, slashing upwards. So like blood just goes all the way up in the sky and just like rains down as I like. Rain yeah. 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 Raining blood. Yeah. <laughs> the cow's head just spins through the uh, air and just like lands in the ground. The one horn pierces into the ground, so it's just kind of stuck there, like as a post. <laughs> awesome. It looks like the end of Carrie. <laughs> Cregan himself is uh, bleeding, and he's going to say, "You were were the adversary," and then he's just kind of kind of like. Put his hand on the the skin or whatever of the uh, uh, Moscuta. Say, good job. But then he's going to grab the scythe. And I'm going to look over at Cregan and go, man, I got your ass kicked, didn't you? It Dude. knew how to deliver a blow, but it wasn't anything I couldn't handle. I'm tough. All right, so while you guys are having your quick moment of triumph, you hear the sound of zombies beating against the door down here to the south. God damn it. Damn. And uh, you feel like you're not done clearing this place out yet, and we'll uh, go ahead and call it there for tonight. All right. Awesome. Um, all right, so most D&D &D sessions, they have you fighting rats. We fought a cow, which is, by the way, way cooler. Um, so we're back. This was uh, an immense amount of fun for me um every week uh we saw you've met new characters tonight you've seen the same great people play these new characters as great as they have played characters in the past um at the end of the show we give everybody a quick second to talk about themselves before we get out of here um we'll just go around the horn we'll start up with nick um have fun tonight good first session for you yeah oh, computer crashes no <laughs> um, yeah no <laughs> It was a great, great, uh, great session. That was awesome. A lot of fun. Um, I never don't really play a caster super often, so I'm stoked to play caster and learn this new system. It's uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun so far. So yeah, so thank you, uh, Stephen, for hosting. Mm -hmm. Thanksgiving um, for us. Let's get uh, tented just in case. Uh, technical glitches <laughs> aside, um, you know we've got a girl power thing going on. Me and you um yeah you have a good time we we fucked up a cow good for us yeah that <laughs> um, was pretty cool and then tell us a little uh, about yourself our buddy our boy weirdo i'm tenta i'm the one that had a little bit more computer problems today and uh yeah it was i'm uh just glad to be part of this whole thing and going on two years now and that feels wild to me, but also like, right. you know, time, time does fly. So, and, uh, glad to be around these guys and can't wait for next week. Uh, and I'm definitely not coming down off that roof. <laughs> so take that. <laughs> and thank you, Steven. I appreciate it, dude. Awesome. Dahlia just lives there forever now. Foreshadowing. Yeah. <laughs> Dahlia's Three a girl. from now, yeah. should we go back to the farm and check on Dahlia? It's probably a good idea. Um, <laughs> hey, girl, what's up? You still on the roof? Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep, sure am. Yeah. Awesome. All right, let's slide over to uh, our boy making his triumphant return tonight. Um, police, rival of a party member. Uh, stabby stab, spelly spell. Um, welcome back, homie. Um, you have a good time? Tell us about yourself. Uh, had a blast. Um, it's, uh, definitely a different playing a melee person that actually can cast. So it actually, you know, it's nice. It's a, it's a nice change of pace. Uh, I actually like this character so far, so I can't wait to actually get further into it. Um, but as y'all see, it's this little one right here who I, uh, you know, one of my lovely reasons why I get to come back is she's finally, you know, not so needy, but still needy right now. Like right now she needs me to go put clothes on her. So, uh, um, glad, uh, glad to be finally playing again and, uh, can't wait to see where this goes. Awesome. I missed you, buddy. Um, our barbarian up from a gnome, um, everybody kind of playing out of court out of sorts today. So 
Great. Uh, Landon, mm -hmm. uh, you have a good time, buddy. And then tell us about yourself. Oh, yeah. I had a great time I'm playing a Barbarian. Uh, unlike in, you know, 5th edition and Pathfinder, Barbarians are very much glass cannons. You'll notice that I got hit a lot. Well, I got hit twice, but uh, uh, Barbarian, at least mine. Yours. Yeah, my, my Barbarian has the AC of, like, a wizard, so it's easy to get hit, but obviously he does a lot of damage to compensate. So I will be... Letting our wonderful cleric kill me several <laughs> times throughout this uh, adventure. I just want you to um, feel useful. Yeah, you're going to be very useful. You're going to be pretty good's best friend. Um, but anyways, uh, I'm Landon Baker. Um, I've had a actually busy week. Yesterday was my last birthday. Tomorrow is our wedding anniversary. And, you know, today's the, you know, start of a new campaign, of course. So I've... Uh, had a busy week, but I uh, love every bit of it. So, um, you know, I look forward to playing with this group of guys. Uh, I love this group of guys. Um, I look forward to playing with you all every week. So uh, hopefully we have plenty more years to come with all this gaming. So a ton of fun. Awesome. Uh, that's it. So I was just checking, and it looks like you have the same AC as the bat. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me and the bat. You and Moody tanking up front. Got it. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, order. I do have a big, I do have a big bag of hit points, but yeah, that's that's usually how barbarians defend is just being like a billion hit points. So yeah, <laughs> I'm not invulnerable. I just, I'm just really healthy. Um, awesome. <laughs> yeah, I, I basically get one freebie. I get one hit for free, and then the rest of them, I'm just taking the pain. You'll be fine. Um, all right, uh, we've never done this with our new GM, Steven. Um, again, thank you for not only helping us like make this transition to Pathfinder, but also bringing like a really awesome session where we fought a cow. Um, so yeah. thank you um, for that. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, and then I'll close out, and we will get out of here. Just wait to how many cows you're going to fight till the end of the campaign. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what number. I'll grow tired of fighting cows, but I... I, I can't wait to find out what it is. You'll start fighting cows that join together like Voltron. Oh, God. Gundam cow. Just giant swarm right, of man. cows, yeah. Don't, don't, don't promise things. I'm getting my hopes up. All right, yeah, I've, I've had a ton of ton fun uh, running you guys through the system, teaching you how to play. Uh, I've been playing Pathfinder for about two-ish years now, um, but it's probably my favorite system at this point. I've played a ton of systems, and uh, it's definitely the best one going. Um, so I look forward to teaching you guys and teaching our viewers. Hopefully they can learn how to play and play the system themselves because it's a fantastic system. Awesome. Um, glad to have you again. Thank you so much. Uh, to our friend Roll for Perception, thank you for uh, the raid. Unfortunately, you're getting here just at the end of an amazing first session. We killed a cow. Um, without some context, that's going to seem a little weird, but thank you. Um, we love new people. We appreciate you stopping by. Um, I've been Manny at Grown Up Geek. Uh, your host tonight. Uh, I played Vita. This was an amazingly good time. It really shows what uh, like a well seasoned GM and then a bunch of people who've been playing together for so long and doing this can just have the most amazing kind of fun playing this game with just a couple of us. And hey, sudden ending there, kind of. So our uh, our apologies. Uh, new system, new year. Uh, we're still working out some technical glitches. So I just didn't want the stream to end like that here on YouTube. So I just want to take this chance to say all the things I would have said before I got interrupted. Um, obviously, uh, like I said, I want to thank all my players um, for being with us for all these two years, uh, to Steven for coming in and giving us all this time and having such a great time and teaching us and hopefully teaching you, uh, the viewers, everything uh, you would like to know at this time when it seems like the most logical to ask questions about Pathfinder and transition from 5e. Um, as we have, we started in October, so this was not a quick decision to make. We've been making this before all of these recent things have happened, and so it just so happened that the timing of our show began uh, right after these things with Wizards of the Coast have been going on. Um, so we'd like to thank, once again, my players and Steven who put this together. Um, we had an amazing time tonight. Uh, everybody who watched, we did a much higher number um, of our live Twitch viewers than we usually did. Um, so we appreciate everybody there. Uh, new followers who showed up to potentially see us uh, see a new system 
Um, thank you um, to our friend Insight Check for the raid. Uh, we really appreciate it, and we hope to see those new people again real soon. Um, this was just a preview of things to come uh, for this campaign and this year on the channel. Um, I know there were some technical issues during the stream, and once again, we apologize. But this is where we're going, and we're very excited to do three systems in 2023, um, the first of which is Pathfinder 2E. So um, you can catch us every Tuesday, 7 p.m. Uh, Eastern Time, uh, twitch.tv slash growedupgeek to watch us live. Uh, we're available the following Monday uh, on YouTube channel at our YouTube channel, youtube.com uh, slash at growedupgeek. Um, that's it for that. And always remember, uh, I love tabletop games and the people who play them. Thank you to everybody who was a part of tonight's show. We hope to see you again real soon um, with not only Pathfinder, but all the new systems we've got coming in 2023. So thank you again for everybody. Sorry about the ending. Um, hopefully this makes it right, and we'll see you again real soon. So thank you very much.